the harsh development of body and mind, where all the fighters are eager for a world title. But only a few are willing to pay the price. Desde el gran campeón mexicano to the next generation of champions. We are Toscano Boxing. These are the Rising Stars. De la tierra de los guerreros aztecas. To the land of the free and the home of the brave. Mexico and the U.S. Two nations united by one sport. Their goal is to build the superstars of tomorrow. From the streets to the gym. A bloody journey seeking greatness requires sacrifice, dedication, and hard work. development of body and mind, where all the fighters are eager for a world title. But only a few are willing to pay the price. Desde el gran campeón mexicano to the next generation of champions. We are Toscano Boxing. These are the Rising Stars. De la tierra de los guerreros aztecas. To the land of the free and the home of the brave. Mexico and the U.S. Two nations united by one sport. Their goal is to build the superstars of tomorrow. From the streets to the gym. A bloody journey seeking greatness requires sacrifice, dedication, and hard work.
the harsh development of body and mind, where all the fighters are eager for a world title. But only a few are willing to pay the price. Desde el gran campeón mexicano to the next generation of champions. We are Toscano Boxing. These are the Rising Stars. de la tierra de los guerreros aztecas to the land of the free Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your main event of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the excitement is electric here in Tijuana, Baja, California, the mecca of boxing in the Western Hemisphere. We are so excited to return once again here for another edition of Toscano Boxing Promotions. Rising stars, folks, welcome. I am Brandon Kyle. I will be your eyes and ears ringside for another stellar event tonight. We cannot wait as we have a stack card of high-level professional boxing to come for free for you on the Fight Hype YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Also joining me in the booth tonight is fight aficionado and sports psychologist 
Rafael Alcaraz. Rafael, welcome back once again. We're super excited to have you for another night of great boxing. Thank Richard you Scott. so much. I'm so excited. Like you just said, Tijuana is made for these kinds of events, and the crowd is already packed, and we haven't even started with the main event. So it's going to be a crazy night of fights, and in Tijuana, combat sports is synonymous with amazement here at the Auditorio Tijuana. Exactly. We're at the Auditorio Municipal where all these great fighters of uh, Tijuana history have come through and fought before. And uh, tonight, the crowd is already packing in. Usually the prelim fights, you know, they start to trickle in for the main card. But the crowd is packed. The horns are going. You hear the, 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 the crowd cheering. I heard people yeah, cheering. Yeah, cheering already. When there they... hasn't been one fight yet. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's electric. We, we, we might lose our voice, as we said, as we start uh, uh, commentating, just to be able to be heard over this really ruckus crowd here tonight. We're super Super excited here. We have some uh, um, some old uh, friends returning to the ring as Damian Sosa is going to be our main event once again. But uh, we have someone who hasn't been in the ring for a while as Wade Jones, the Terminator, comes back after over a year layoff to take on Omar Alvera. Now, tell me a little bit about the psychology of taking that much time off. You know, they say some fighters believe in ring rust, some don't. But it's got to be hard to take over a year off to come back into a sport and an event like this and try to perform at a high level. At the end of the day, it's a high performance sport. So you have to be on point all the time. So when you, you take yourself away from the ring, something happens. Is it positive? Is it negative? We're going to find out tonight. And that's the excitement behind all this because we don't know if it's going to be something positive for him to rest, get back. Sometimes you get into a lot of fights, you get some injuries going, but then eventually you get you we get you get it going on again. You have to have some time off. And then also, as I mentioned before, Damian the Samurai Sosa from right here in Tijuana is taking on Ivan Alvarez here in our main event. Now, we've seen Damian Sosa many times before. Every time they raise the level of competition for Damian, and every time he raises his level to defeat that competition, tonight is no joke. He has a, an experienced fighter, has a 31 victories, right, over 40 fights. Uh, this guy does have a lot more experience than... Hey, these guys are, you guys are ready to go, huh? See, these guys can't even wait for the broadcast to begin. They're ready to go right now. But yes, as I was talking about Damien, um, he always rises to the occasion. He is a young Tijuana superstar, and a lot of people are starting to talk that this might be Tijuana's next world champion. And you can feel it. People are ready for this fight. Samurai has been very dominant in all of his fights. He's a huge fighter and a crowd favorite. We have a lot of fighters from Tijuana tonight, and that's going to play an effect on on the fights on just the, the, the crowd here is going to influence the fights. Yep. If you have a home court advantage, this is the time to use it. But also the added pressure of having your family, your friends, everybody that believes in you here, you can't really mess up in front of your home crowd. I was going to ask you, there's so many fighters and we have another fight where it's two Tijuana locals where Marcos Vasquez taking on Eric, the Pantera Robles, both from Tijuana, both are going to have big crowds here. Is this more, I mean, does this, some some fighters pressure, sometimes it, 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 it kind of can, can break a fighter, right? Of course, of course. And at the end of the day, these fighters want to give their all. That can be some added pressure, the adrenaline of having everybody cheer your name. It can be a good thing or a bad thing because if you gas out because you got all hyped up because your family was here, your girlfriend is here, it's not the same as when you're focused, you strategize, and you follow the game plan. But we shall excited. see. Oh, yeah. We shall see. And let's, uh, without further ado, bring it to Pablo Flores in the ring as we're ready to start this next edition of Toscano Boxing Promotions Rising Stars. ¿Qué tal amigos? Muy buenas tardes, esta es la tercera llamada. ¡Comenzamos! Y a nombre de Toscano Boxing Promotions y Chicken Ranch Casino, les damos la más cordial de las bienvenidas a otra edición más. Y en esta ocasión, desde la meca del boxeo, en el hemisferio oeste del mundo, Tijuana, Baja California, México. Este es el auditorio Fausto Gutiérrez Moreno. Este evento es sancionado a ustedes por la Honorable Comisión de Box y Artes Marciales Mixtas de esta ciudad de Tijuana, Presidente Alberto Martínez, Comisionado de Boxeo, Juan Manuel Cardona, el Jefe de Servicios Médicos, el Dr. Benjamín Sandoval, al frente del tiempo, César Fernández, sus tres jueces, Carlos Flores, Max Úñiga La Bandera y el Internacional Alejandro Rochín, su referí en este turno, Julio Arana Jr. Ahora... Caminando al ring de Guadalajara, Jalisco. 
Marlene, Katrina Sandoval. Here we go, Marlene, Katrina Sandoval. Her record doesn't show, but she's had some really, really tough fights with really experienced fighters. She's actually fought Lourdes Juarez, who is a super flyweight. WBC champion with over 30 wins. She went the distance with her, and so she definitely has is, is got the toughness, and tonight she wants to go ahead and display she's got the skill to be victorious against her opponent tonight. Y de Tijuana, Baja California. Carla Valencia. Carla Valencia. 101 with one KO coming in. Obviously, you could hear the crowd start to cheer as, as they announced her name as she will be the hometown favorite for this fight, taking on Guadalajara's Sandoval. Ahora sí, damas y caballeros, tenemos nuestro primer combate de esta velada boxística. Está pactado a seis asaltos en la división de peso Super Gallo. Let's get ready. Four rounds of boxing in the Super Bantam Weight Division. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. She wears the black trunks with gold trim. He officially weighs in at a limit 122 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantaloncillo negro con oro con un peso de 122 libras. In 10 pro bouts, she stands with a record. Two victories, five defeats, three draws, and one KO. Cuenta con un récord profesional. Dos victorias, cinco derrotas, tres empates, y una de esas victorias por la vía del cloroformo. De la perla tapatía, Guadalajara, Jalisco. Marlene, Katrina, Sandoval. Honor across. The ring is standing in the red corner. She wears the white trunks with red trim. She officially weighs in 123 pounds. Y su oponente en la esquina roja. Pantaloncillo color blanco con rojo. Con un peso de 123 libras. She stands with the record. One victory, no defeats, one draw. And her victory coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de una victoria, cero derrotas, un empate. Y esa victoria por la vía del cloroformo. Puritito, round zero, Colonia Libertad de Tijuana. Carla Valencia. And now giving out the final instructions. Con las indicaciones finales, su referee en turno, Julio Arana Jr. Four rounds, cuatro saltos. Damas, buenas tardes. Ya les expliqué el reglamento. Por favor, déjame ver. Limpia, dura, con mucho control y con mucha disciplina. Señor otro vocal, el suyo, choque guantes, bailamos. Here we go. Four scheduled rounds in the Super Bantamweight division. You hear the hometown crowd cheering for their girl, Carla Valencia. She's got height, she's got reach, but the experience by far goes to Marlene. Katrina Sandoval. So we will see if that is going to play a factor in tonight's very opening bout of Toscano Boxing Rising Stars. Man, like I said, the crowd is already packed in here from fight one, and we are excited for eight scheduled bouts. As we get it underway, myself, Brandon Kyle, Rafa Alcaraz calling this fight. These girls ain't wasting any time, Rafa. I mean, just right out of the gate with those couple jabs, don't even say hello, not even a glove touch. They are right into it, and both corners are, are screaming, excited as these girls exchanging punches instantly as the, as the round begins. Some good power coming from the shorter Sandoval. 
Wow, Katrina just like digging into that mouthpiece and just throwing bombs. She sure is, and you know, I would expect the longer fighter Valencia to maybe try to use a little footwork and try to create some distance maybe with the jab, uh, but she is letting, she is definitely letting Sandoval get her inside way right now there, Rafa. Oh yeah, Katrina Sandoval with that gold trim and black shorts, I mean, almost had her into a corner. Oh, nice left hand lands here in the southpaw position. She is throwing bangers, nothing but hooks. Way to start off this opening fight here. <laughs> this looks amazing. I mean, what a combination. Oh, another Just left hand. Non-stop flurry by both of these fighters. You see both faces reddening already from the punches landed in this opening round. Oh, I can hear him thudding against the head of Valencia. Oh, another big thud. Man, she's Ooh. giving it all she's got right now in this first round. She's doing some good head work, but at the end of the day, just the volume of Katrina Sandoval's punches, one of them is going to land. And I'm telling you what, ooh, there we go. She's going to the body a little bit. Is Valencia trying to maybe slow down the pressure? But I mean, man, how long? I mean, Katrina's been punching for the, the entire the, of this first and round. And landing. I mean, that one landed flush underneath that right eye and another right. The corner asking. Imploring, 10 seconds left in this opening round. Carla Valencia, the corner's asking her to, to just keep that guard up because all those punches are just landing like you just saw there. Oh, bink, bank, boom, wow. you know. Rafa, we already said we might lose our voice by the end of the night. We might lose our voice by the end of this uh, fight. I don't the way know. It's this is right really now. exciting. What a way to start off the show. Toscana Boxing pulling out just the excitement. Round one with these two boxers. I mean, wow, what, what level of fighting and just stamina overall. That was just great. Well, you mentioned stamina, and you got to wonder as we go to the replay, you see the exchanges just going back and forth. Look at those shots landing. But I mean, the, the way that that sound of all is throwing, I mean, it's four rounds, I know, but I mean, can she go like this for four rounds? Because Valencia was able to weather that early storm, and we'll see if she's going to be able to keep this pace as the fight continues. I mean, both of these fighters have a, a great strength and conditioning program behind them. Uh, first round, but at this pace, I don't know. I don't know anybody at any level that can handle this kind of pace. They both look like they're, you know, neither breathing hard. You see Valencia bouncing over there, the determination on the eyes of Sandoval as we go into round two of this schedule four rounder. And they picked up right where they <laughs> left off. I'm just going to sit and let these girls talk with these gloves for a second. Wow, oh, that was there a we huge go. one. Valencia landing back now with that right hand. Digging into it. Oh, big shots landing. I think Valencia's corner gave her some, some good advice because she's coming in and connecting. That straight right landed a couple good times, but here goes Sandoval ducking under, trying to close the distance. Body shot coming upstairs again to Sandoval. That was a good level change by Katrina Sandoval. Sandoval's a little bulldog. As soon as uh, Valencia gets a little space, she ducks her head in and charges like a bulldozer there. Oh, man, no, Just stop. going forward, Katrina Sandoval does not back down at all. Even after getting punched, she's still the one that's uh, being the aggressor. Absolutely, man. What a determination on her, on her style here tonight. Nice body shot as she ducks under. And I think it's a good strategy by Sandoval being the shorter fighter. Oh, absolutely. She's just, doing what she got to do. Yeah, just keep her backing up, not let her use her distance, not let her use her height, and just connecting those, I mean, those overhand rights are landing. Now we see a little bit of blood out of the nose of, yeah, of, Valencia. of Valencia. She's starting to show a little bit of that wear and tear from all the punches she's landed from Sandoval in the, in the white gloves. Man, she's got her in the ropes now. I mean, she's starting to tire maybe because I don't see Valencia fighting back as much. Nope. She came out strong, but man, Sandoval's just swamping her. Yeah, just the pace of Sandoval is, is something else. 20 seconds left, and I mean, she hasn't stopped for even a second to throw punches. And Carla Valencia's really feeling it. She looks a little bit slowed down. 10 seconds left. Oh, big shots coming back from Valencia to finish the round. Oh, but another left hand. That left hand is finding a home a lot for Sandoval. Good Lord, Sandoval. Well, I'm, I'm exhausted just trying to call this fight, Rock. <laughs> I mean, both of these fighters have some knockouts under their belts. So if this pace keeps going and they keep connecting, they're both very close to either being knocked out or getting the knockout uh, because, I mean, both of these fighters are not stopping. 
I saw a little bit more aggression on Katrina's side than on Carla Valencia, but let's not forget that Valencia packs a punch. So she might not need as much punch as to land for the damage to be setting in on uh, Marlene Katrina Sandoval. Yeah, she's just having a little bit of trouble finding that distance, Rafa. She wants it, but you know, as soon as she takes a step back, you know, Sandoval is just literally ducking down and charging in like, like a bulldog and just relentless with the hooks and the short shots. Oh yeah. Here we go, round three of a scheduled four. As they pull the benches out, referee calls him to the center. Okay, we see a little bit difference in the in the face oh. of oh. Carla Valencia. A little yeah, bit you more see the determination. determination. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> oh, but she's still. I mean, she's coming forward. I think that hometown crowd's lighting a fire, and you see a little bit of a, a almost a, a deep breath taken by Sandoval there. Wow, what, I mean, what heart on both of these fighters, just taking it and still going forward. This is an instant Tijuana classic fight right now happening in front of us. Way to open up this Rising Stars card. Wow, this is the first time we've seen Sandoval being pushed back on, onto the ropes. Again, as we get into the later rounds, how long can Sandoval keep up that pace? She might be starting to tire. She might have given too much as her, co her coach is employing her. Come forward. They're telling her head movement, left and right. You know, Mike Tyson, peekaboo style. They want her to move her head a little bit more so she's not such a target. But, I mean, when you get tired, it's tough to use your legs to move that head. Oh, and Carla Valencia, I mean, at the end of the second round, we saw her a little bit, a little bit angry. A little bit, a little bit defeated, and now we see her determined, just biting down on that mouthpiece and throwing some bombs at Sandoval. Yeah, it is easy to, it could be easy to say that 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 all three judges might have seen it for Sandoval the first two rounds. They were close rounds, but Sandoval was the aggressor, landed more shots. So I maybe Valencia knows I I cannot waste another round. I have to win this round, and I have to win the fourth or potentially put her out if I want to win this fight. Oh, now she's fighting back, 15 seconds left. Sandoval still mounting punches and big attack, but not nearly at the rate she was earlier on. Definitely we see Sandoval slowing down a little bit. Oh, nice left hook lands there for Valencia. But man, Sandoval comes back with three of her own. Big left hand. There. Wow, the left hands are landing for both <laughs> fighters. I mean, can we say fight of the night when it's only the, the first, first fight? fight? I know. <laughs> we could say, yeah, tentative, a fight of the night so this far. Is, definitely is a fight of the night. Like, this is a classic Toscano boxing fight, period. I've called several shows for these guys, and this is one of the best fights I've seen already in the three rounds. You see both faces marked up as we go to the, the replay here. Both fighters landing, but as you, as you were saying, Valencia definitely came on stronger and I think started to turn the tide a little bit in that round, Rafa. There we see a couple of good punches and good combinations uh, from Carla Valencia. And I mean, let's see if this, this hometown crowd can pick up her spirits in the last round because, uh, I, I mean, I'm glad I'm not a judge, but those first two, I think Sandoval took them. Yeah, I mean, if you gotta just, I mean, they're so close, but with the aggression and the determination and, the, and just the sheer numbers that, that Sandoval was throwing, uh, yeah, I, I, I gave personally Ladies to her. Ladies and gentlemen, this is round number four. Your final round, damas y caballeros, el round número cuatro, el último round. Here we go, let's see who's gonna be the one that's gonna take over this fourth round and potentially take this fight, Katrina. Katrina's looking like she's breathing heavy. Yeah, she is. She's still throwing heavy, but she's definitely not uh, as, as, as peppy as she was in those first two rounds. She's getting a little sloppier with it as, uh, as Valencia. Ooh, lands a big right hand. Throwing the haymakers. Valencia's look, looking a little bit better using that distance, but Sandoval's doing a great job cutting that distance in half and throwing her against the ropes. Trying to get her up here in the corner with us. Nice left hand. You hear the thudded ringside. You can't hear it in the broadcast. But these punches are still thudding as they land here. Shoot, they're so loud. You might hear it in the broadcast. I think, I think you can hear them. Got to see the heart of these two warriors displayed tonight to open up this, this fight card. Got this crowd hyped up. Nice wow. body work. Little oh. shoe shine down low from Valencia. Beautiful body work by Valencia. 
That left hand keeps landing as you see that right eye start to swell up on Sandoval. That left hook has done some work, but you also see Valencia's face is reddened around the eyes as well. Nose starting to bleed of Valencia. Yeah, these, these two women are putting up a huge show to start off this night. Man, the whole crowd is into it right now. You can hear them imploring their hometown. There it goes. There they go. Last 20 seconds. And now we see the push. But Put man, some Sandoval. gasoline on this fire. But Sandoval was relentless in this. She will not be she will not be stopped or backed up in this last round. Ten seconds left. Wow, what a great overhand right. Oh, nice hook though from Valencia, man. Both was big right hand from Again. Valencia. Big body shot. Wow. No, this crowd is on their feet. Even the judges are on their feet. Oh, that was amazing to watch. Mutual respect here. Mutual respect given here. As both fighters proceed to the opponent's corners, they hug in the middle of the ring. Wow, 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 I can't believe that was the first fight. And you know that does, it sets the card as we go to that final replay, Rafa. I mean, it was hard to even to keep up with these girls, the commentary wise. They didn't stop. They didn't stop. There was never a moment where they were like measuring each other up or trying to never. watch the distance. It was on and popping from Bell first to Bell last. I mean, hopefully this sets the, the tone for all the other fighters getting ready just to see like, hey, I got to bring it tonight. I was going to mention that. You know, they're backstage, they hear the crowd. You know, there might even be monitors back there as they're watching the card. They know that that this crowd is hype and they need to come perform, especially if these girls are going to put on a show like that to open it up. Ah, that's a hard act to follow. That is a hard act to follow. No, this was really, really good. Let's see how the judges score it because on the highlights, both of these women have some great shots. I mean, those body shots body shots from Carla Valencia were beautiful. I, I could easily see a draw here. Uh, I mean, that last round, you could have called it for Sandoval because of the aggression, but I mean, Valencia was landing, I think, sharper power shots, even though she wasn't pushing her back, even though she was on the ropes, her counter shots, that, that four uh, combination, four uppercut all hit the body there while she was on the ropes. Even though she was on the ropes and not necessarily pushing Sandoval back, she was landing some great shots on the counter end. Yeah. Just so difficult when it goes the distance like that yeah. after a fight where both of these women didn't stop throwing punches. It's it's really difficult to actually calculate which ones were landing 100%, which ones were significant, which ones were blocked. It's just a flurry from start to finish. I mean, literally, the first bell rang, and they just – it. remember that's – I don't know, you're old enough, but maybe not all our viewers, but there used to be a game called uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots where you sit there and you just mash their two little toy robots. Oh, yeah. And, you just, and that's what it looked like, Rock'em Sock'em Robots the whole time as we go to Pablo Flores for the official ring announcement here to see who takes that opening bout here, Toscano Rising Stars. Both fighters are laughing it off, or excited about what kind of show they gave. Oh, man, that's a, that's, a, that, that, that's a Tijuana classic fight right there. Um, in the Auditorio Municipal, one of these uh, legendary events. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of I'll go to the scorecards. Después de cuatro rounds, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. El juez, Judge Carlos Flores, he scores at 38, 38 even, 38 a 38. And judges, los jueces, Max Zuniga, La Bandera, y Alejandro Rochin have the same scores of 39 to 37. Coinciden en números estos dos últimos, 39 a 37. For your winner, by the way, of majority decision. Vencedora de la decisión majoritaria. Guadalajara, Jalisco, presente. Marlene, Katrina Sandoval. Disagree with that. I feel like the, just the, the sheer aggression and determination. Well, at the end of the day, Carla Valencia. Carla Valencia gave a great fight. I think she tied a couple of rounds. Yes. But definitely, uh, I mean, Marlene Sandoval took that first and second round. Yeah. As we look at a little bit of that action there, I mean, you, you see Valencia was landing shots, but I mean, it was almost like a three to one. It would be three shots from Sandoval, and Valencia would land a really good one in between. But, I mean, you know, 
I'm surprised that, that Katrina was able to, to continue that pace. That's what surprised me the yeah. most. Because, I mean, you know at one point she was tired and mentally she, her mind said, I don't know if I can do this, but some, like what she just was able to flip the switch, yeah. Rafa, and keep coming forward. No, definitely. There were, there were a couple parts in the maybe like the third round where it was like, okay, all those punches I threw maybe wasn't the best idea. <laughs> But then she came, she came around. She came back around at that fourth round, and I think, I think that's what gave her the win. Yeah, she, she, she did take a lull in the third round, and I wasn't sure if she was going to come back. And there's nothing tougher than being exhausted and coming back again in that fourth round. She's kind of biting that mouthpiece, and with her experience, she's had some tough losses. I think you know sometimes you know some fighters just say, "Hey, enough's enough. I am not. I don't care. I'm ready to die out here. I'm not losing this one." No, after you come out from a. Uh you come from a, a loss like that, just winning it just feels so good. Yeah, we're gonna check out our next fight tale of the tape here as Angel Cuevas takes on Hugo Macias. Cuevas 20 to Macias is 29 years old. He's got twice the fights does Cuevas. He's undefeated, both of them undefeated. Both of them have a high KO ratio. Every fight Macias has been in, he's KO'd. Same height exactly, so I mean, we got two power punchers here that can finish opponents. This is gonna be electric. Some people say this could be potential fight of the night as well. I mean, and both these fighters are from Tijuana. Looks like we're ready to throw it to Pablo for our official introductions. Yeah. Hugo Macias. Oh, you hear the crowd pumped up for Hugo Macias. Now here, here's a little fun fact. Between these guys, they got about 400 amateur fights together. Hugo Macias, 200 amateur fights. So even though he's young in his professional career at 3-0, and o, it doesn't mean that he is uh, uh, inexperienced in the ring. You should see a very high-level technical professional fight, even though these guys are both young in their professional careers with their extensive amateur background. Hugo looking good. Saying hello to family and friends that came out here to support. Bowing out at the four corners. Letting the whole crowd know he's he's here and he's ready to go. Both these guys are in tip-top shape at weigh-ins, I tell you what. Y también de Tijuana, Baja California, Ángel Cuevas. And Hell Cuevas again, like I said, damn near 200 amateur fights himself. He was a Six time, or he was a, a national champion one time as well here for Mexico. So Mexican amateur national champion. So he definitely has experience and experience in big fights, Rafa. Ooh, he, look, the confidence behind this guy. I mean, you can feel it. The way he just walked in and the stare down to his opponent. Man, I'm super pumped about this one. Two Tijuana boys in their hometown. I mean, and you know these guys have, have had it on their calendar. They, they, they've been watching each other. You watch, you watch the other oh, guys yeah. in your weight class, and you have to know that these guys have circled each other in the calendar at one point. That they knew they're going to fight, yeah. and, and they, they get to do it right here at Toscano Boxing Rising they've Star. They've probably been on, on the same fight card before, watching each other's fight, like you said. I mean, these guys grew up in the ranks here at TJ, so this is a good fight. And I wouldn't doubt it if they might have even uh, scrapped and sparred before. Uh, the way you know Tijuana is is a lot of cross training going on, so I they one way or another they know each other, and which always makes for more exciting fight, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, the fact that they have some sort of history. Damas y caballeros, Toscano Boxing Promotions, Chicken Ranch Casino. Presentan ustedes cuatro rounds de combate en la categoría de peso super pluma. Let's get ready. Four rounds of boxing in the Super Featherweight Division. Your three judges go in this bout on ringside. Sus tres jueces, Alejandro Rochin, Carlos Flores, y Max Zúñiga la bandera. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action. El tercero en la superficie, Julio Arana Jr. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears a burgundy trunks with black and gold trim. Officially weighed. 150, 131 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantanos y color guinda con oro y negro. Con un peso de 131 libras. In his professional campaign, he stands perfect. Three victories, no defeats. And all of his three victories coming by the best way of knockout. Presenta un récord. 
Tres victorias, cero derrotas y todas sus tres victorias por la vía del knockout de la colonia Los Álamos, Tijuana, Baja California. Hugo Macías. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner, wearing the black and red trunks. Official weight. 130 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, pantaloncillo color negro con rojo, con un peso de 130 libras. He stands as a professional with a record of six victories, no defeats, and four of his victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Cuenta un record de seis victorias, cero derrotas, y cuatro de sus victorias por la vía del knockout. Colonia Terrazas del Valle, gimnasio Kid Melo de Tijuana. Ángel Cuevas. And now with the final instructions, dando las indicaciones finales, su referee en turno, Julio Arana Jr. Four rounds, cuatro saltos. Caballeros, ya expliqué el elemento. Dame la pelea limpia, duele con mucho control, con mucha disciplina. Segmento vocal, el suyo, choque guantes, bailamos. Love that phrase from the referee. Let's dance right before they get started. We'll see how much dancing's going on. We didn't see a lot of dancing in that first fight. We saw <laughs> definitely not a dance. <laughs> it was a phone booth dance. If it was a dance at all, we'll see if these boys do a little bit more. And again, they're they're going to be a little bit more technical with their amateur backgrounds. I don't think you you're going to have a first round run at each other, meet each other in the ring, and, and, and du duke it out with these two, as we see. Macias that comes out the southpaw position to the orthodox position of Cuevas. Exchanging jabs and right hands and grabs and straights here so far. A little bit of a height advantage here. It looks like for Macias, even though they're both listed at 5'8. Pretty much similar in size, weight, and, 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 and build. Usually the southpaw stance has a little bit of an advantage. Gets to train with a lot more orthodox stance fighters. Macias's left hand is going to be a secret weapon if he knows how to use it. But I see Cueva switch to a southpaw stance here. Maybe trying to confuse the southpaw fighter here. Pulling a little Rocky II action. Switches there he goes back. back. Pretty effortless with the switch. Some guys do a switch just to give a different look, but oh. Nice. Comes out of nowhere, that right-handed jab. Yeah, hit the top of the dome there of Cuevas. Did Macias. Macias bounces back. Ooh, misses a big left. Comes back with that hook again. That lead hook is finding a home. Nice little left hand by Cuevas. I was trying to use that lead hand as himself there. Match the lead hand action of his opponent. Nice straight to the body there from Macias. Macias comes upstairs after he lands that straight to the body, setting it up. Interesting to see Cueva smile at those. You know, when, when they smile back, it's because they got... You got they, me. You got me. Right to the sternum there, of the, the solar plexus of, of Cuevas. Does Macias land that straight? He's using that straight high and low. Looking real sharp tonight. Yeah, Macias is moving really good. Bouncing around, nice little head movement. Fighters with a big fight IQ, taking their time, not getting too overexcited. But at the same time, it, it is a four rounder. And so they do have to get busy pretty soon. Maybe one round to fill out. But after that, we're gonna have to see someone start to take over here. Oh, nice. Counters coming back here. Oh, but he gets landed. He wow. opened up a little aggressively. Did Cuevas. Cuevas getting a second wind. Cuevas getting, getting that crowd behind him too. 10 seconds, opening round. Now Macias starting to be the aggressor. A nice body shot counter there for Macias. Oh man, whoa! All the way to the very last 
third ring of the bell there to stop nice the little, round. They were fighting through that bell for a second. Nice little left hook by Macias in that last second at the buzzer. Here we go. We got a nice little fight. Uh, it started to break out there at the end of that first round. We'll see what uh, what Cuevas can do. He started to get more aggressive as we look at the replay here, but missing a lot um, as he got more aggressive. Landing a little, but also missing a lot and opening himself up to counters. A little bit more within himself is Macias, a little bit more controlled. You can see Cuevas get a little bit wild there at the end of that first round. Yeah, and that could be that, that crowd nerves and wanting to, to put on a show for that hometown crowd too. Hey, I mean, if all your, your family's here, your cousins that, I mean, they've been watching you train all these years. They wanted to see you fight. They came out tonight. You want to give them a knockout. Uh, you can there hear them, Cuevas. They're chanting Cuevas as the high guard of Macias comes up with the jab to start off, starting head movement. Let's see if Macias turns it up. He's trying to land that straight right. He's trying to time that straight left of Macias. But Cuevas is missing with that right so far. Let's see if he can find it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you called it. Oh, oh now a left, left one. Hook. The blood starts to trickle. Oh, we got a fight on our hands. Big blood trickling from the nose of Macias. Oh, but he lands a big one too. Oh, his nose is oh, badly hurt. You see a lot of blood leaking like a sieve there. This is huge for the Cuevas. Now the crowd is behind him 100%. Oh, we got a fight broke out in this boxing match here. Oh, left hand. Oh, I should have brought my poncho. Yeah, we're in this I should have brought my poncho. I'm holding <laughs> up my binder to block the blood. It is flying all over this ring right now. Oh, every time he throws, you can see it. Just, oh, nice, nice right hand lands one. again. Dead in the center. See now, I think this is detrimental for Macias. Don't get into this brawl right now. Get back to it. You were doing good when you were being technical. Don't get drawn into this brawl because obviously he hurt you once. Nose might be broken the way it's bleeding right now. So get back to that jab, settle down. And as you see him start to do, there's that experience of those 200 amateur fights come into play. He kind of restrained himself and lands a big wow. left hand himself. That was huge for a second there. Cuevas was getting a little bit too confident. Macias is, is back at strategy. Back to being cool, calm, and collected for a second. He landed a big shot. You can see Cuevas is like, okay, you can land, I can land. We both have power. So let's go ahead and get back to this a uh, little bit more intelligent boxing match here as they settle down second half of this second round. Nice combinations. Big by power. Cuevas. Big power from, from Cuevas. Cuevas looking for that big straight. Oh, comes with the uppercut off the little quarter turn. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now we, we hear a little bit of Ugos' crowd trying to motivate him a little bit against the, the whole cheering section that Cuevas brought tonight. Trying to match that energy there. Both these guys earning fans with this fight so far. They're both throwing down. Like true Warriors, oh, big shots land for, for Cuevas. That uppercut starting to find a home there as, as Macias tries to step in with a long jab. 10 seconds left here. Macias trying to end strong. Oh, we, as we go to the one minute break in between rounds here. I want to go ahead and thank our wonderful sponsors, Chicken Ranch Casino, been sponsoring us for a long time. And of course, El Cejas Michelada Mix. Great to have these guys on board. They make these nights possible. These nights of great boxing. Wow, the people are going crazy here between rounds. This is what I'm talking about. I think, you know, we could say it's a 1-1 one, one round as we kind of look at some of that action here, Rafa. What are you seeing as you look at this replay? I mean, that was huge start to the round by Cuevas, just hitting him on the nose. And then they got wild. Here we can see one of the exchanges, just throwing bombs, both of these guys. Macias got a little bit of composure back for a second, landed some body punches. 
Rafa, mentally, how tough is it when you when you smell blood in the water to be able to pull no. yourself back and compose yourself? We and saw stay? it. We saw it with Macias. He started going wild, and then he was like, "Wait, wait, this is not. This can't affect me. I got to stick to my game plan." And then he had some success, finished strong. That shows but experience. I don't think it's going to be enough for for him to win that round, but maybe that's that's what he needed to happen. Yeah, you definitely saw one being hunted and one hunting in that last round, and oh, yeah. both of them were able to step back and go, this is this still got two more rounds here. Let's not make anything, uh, 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 make any mistakes, be foolish here. And now let's see what, what Macias' corner told him in between rounds. You know, I'm sure they gave him some advice of, of not getting into these firefights with Cuevas as it's not it's not been a good idea for him in the second round. Cuevas got a nice little smile. He looks like he's starting to have fun in there now. Oh, yeah. I mean, confidence is high during that whole little rest period. Cuevas' is, uh, corner and, and crowd was chanting his name. So, I mean, he feels like he's winning this. But this can be the opportunity Hugo was looking for. Get the other person overconfident. Start letting go of that left hand. Oh, here we go. Beautiful Fire fight again in the pocket. Both these guys controlling the center of the ring. They're not backing up. They're standing right there toe to toe, and they're letting it fly. Macias doing a good job this round of kind of cooling the waters a little bit there. Things started boiling in that last round, and he's doing a good job of settling down here, landing some good shot. Cuevas looked like he's looking for that one big shot, though. He he's, wants that big right hand or that big left hook change the game like he did in the second round. Oh, yeah. I mean, after you connect something like that and you see blood, you want all your punches to look like that. Like that. Oh, yeah. Blood's coming once again. They did it. The corner of Macias did a great job of stopping that flow, but as that left that left hook lands, it's starting to flow again. And here we see the crowd going wild again. You hear the crowd? Oh, yeah. You hear the crowd going back and forth. Half of the crowd is screaming Hugo. Half of the crowd is screaming Cuevas. Less than a minute in this third round. landing you know big Ooh, hook nice lands one. for Macias well, has his guard a little bit lower than Macias let's see if he takes advantage of it oh he's trying to try to jump on him there with 10 seconds left here that 10 second whistle and he's trying to jump and steal this round here Big hooks missing for both guys. Good defense for both guys. Nice head movement. Some nice punches land. Cuevas to end the round. It got me the refs got to step in because the crowd's so loud they can't even hear the bell. No, this is crazy. This is what we're talking about. I mean, this is the second fight of the night. I'm already losing my voice, Rafa. <laughs> I need to chill. I need to chill, out. I need to chill out, man. I, I just, damn it. These fights are so good. No, I can't. We can't. It's not up to us. As you let's take go, it, yeah, let's yeah, take at a this, look. I'm, you know, I'm not going to say anything. You guys just watch this replay. <laughs> I need to breathe here. This replay speaks for itself. The pace got a little bit slower in this third round, to be honest, but both of these fighters are connecting, being a, being a little bit more strategic. But once, once one of them connects, the other one has to counter, and that's how we get these great fights. Wow, wow, wow. These guys, it, it, you know, they're, it's not the first of them. Big respect for both fighters as they touch gloves. I was going to say, you know, this isn't the fire, you know, back and forth firefight we saw in that first fight, but these guys are putting out a lot of energy in these four rounds, Rafa. And here they go again. Last round, they gotta leave it all here. You don't want the judges to be the one deciding your fate, especially in front of your family and friends. Oh, 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 oh. 
little warning of some back of the head punches. Guayaba still smiling. Trying to show no effects of, of wear and tear during this fight. All the phones are out for this fourth and final round. People want to see. Oh yeah. They can feel it. They can feel it happening. It's gonna, it's gonna be explosive. These boys are putting it all out there in this four round. Any second now we could be battle. looking at a knockout. Both of these guys have at least three knockouts under their belt in their professional careers. Who's gonna make oh. the fourth? Oh, they're in the corner duking it out. Referee Julio Araña Jr. separates them. Nice punch to the body. I'm still waiting to see Macias try to use that left hand and connect. Oh, big, both, oh, the little jog, that, that, that ain't nothing. A little jog out from Macias. I mean, both these boys, their shorts are soaked with sweat. Every time a punch lands, you get the sweat flying. They are just absolutely exerting everything they have. Blood is on the mat, on the gloves, and everywhere in between. Ref is asking for more. One minute left. Shoot, ref. Oh, big left hand from Macias. Macias real calculated with that left hand still. Got that high guard still, trying to be disciplined, not get caught in a war here. Oh, man, when he gets caught. caught with that right hand, it's tough not to want to get it back right away. Yep. And Cuevas needs to understand that and keep throwing those. That could force an error. Five seconds left in this battle. <laughs> Ten second. We're just gonna let it ride, yep. baby. Now they're just gonna let everything go. Finish strong. <laughs> Big, big, big standing ovation from the crowd here as both these guys pay respects to each other's corners. Again, much respect being had between these two Tijuana Warriors. Oh, yeah. As Macias takes a bow. Well deserved. They put on a show. Wouldn't expect less from these Tijuana fighters. I think uh, we're reserving interviews for special fights. I think I'm going to go because we have Two exciting Tijuana fighters here. Both of them had a big crowd show up. Want to talk to the winner, see what they were thinking during that war there. So I'll join Pablo. Have a few words with our winner here of our second super featherweight matchup here for Toscano Boxing Promotions Rising Stars, Tijuana, Baja California. It's going to be interesting to see how these judges score the rounds. I am interested to see. I am interested to see. That second round was definitely Cuevas all the way. But other than that, we saw some good technical punches thrown by Macias. We hear the Cuevas crowd chanting here, but you know, the crowd only goes so far when a fight like this. We'll see what the, what the judges thought of this as they tally up the scorecards and bring the fighters to center here. Macias had some really good head movement that we're seeing here in the replay. Ducking under a lot of the punches coming from Cuevas, but when Cuevas connected, he really did some damage. I mean, we were here sitting in the splash zone, almost got a couple droplets on the commentator's table. Oh yeah, I, I, I Toscano shows I always usually bring a little umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the judges have made their decision. And now let's go to the center of the ring with the official decision with Pablo Flores. Ladies and 
Damas y caballeros, después de cuatro rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces, no sin antes un fuerte reconocimiento para ambos pugilistas, Hugo Macías y Ángel Cuevas por este gran combate. El juez, Judge Carlos Flores, he scores at 39, 37, 39 a 37, en favor, en favor de Cuevas. En judges, los jueces, Max Uñiga, la bandera, y Alejandro Rochín, Mápula, they had the same scores, 38-38 even. Estos dos últimos coincidieron en números 38 a 38. Por lo tanto, tenemos un empate mayoritario. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority draw. Interesting decision. A draw for both of these fighters. The, the crowd is cheering. Well, I was, gonna, I was gonna talk to the winner, you know, but you know, I mean, the crowd is 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 kind of happy, I guess. I they're mean, they're it, still cheering for both loss. of them. I mean, I mean, you can't really dis dis you can't disagree too much with that decision because I, I wasn't even thinking that. I, I I just had a feeling one was gonna edge the other. And in one judge's scorecard, it did, but the other two saw it a 50-50 a fight, and I could totally see that. I mean, yeah. that was a coin flip fight, you know. I, at the end, I, 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 I couldn't really tell you which one. I, I could say who I thought won, but I couldn't really defend or you know, defend my position either way, you know. Sure. I mean, sometimes you see a little bit of blood on somebody, you think, hey, they're, they're losing. But if they're connecting body shot after body shot combination and, and being the aggressor, even if they have a bloody hit, it doesn't mean they have a like everything going. Yeah, as we get ready for our next fight, we have the return of Way Jones, the Terminator, taking on Omar Alveda. Little advantage in age there for Alveda. He's got an experience advantage as well. As far as some of the guys he's been in, some former you know world title contenders, but Jones has more fights under his belt. But it's been a year and a half since since that happened, so we'll see if Wade come back strong in his comeback fight. But yeah, excited to see Wade Jones back in the ring there. We've seen him several times in Stockton. Vicious body shot KOs several times. I've seen him go ahead and dispatch his opponents with that. But Omar Camillon Alberta. Coming to bang, I know that for a fact. De Toluca, Estado de México, Omar Camaleón Olvera. Record doesn't show it, but he's been in there with some really experienced fighters as Omar Olvera. And he's gone the distance, he can take a punch, that is for sure. Got that Mexican fighting spirit from Tulca, Mexico, coming here to TJ to take on Stockton's Wade Jones. Big smile on his face. Real happy go lucky kid outside the ring, but once that uh, bell rings, it's a much different animal. I'll He's touching that. gloves with everybody inside that ring. I love that. He's happy to be <laughs> here, man. And from Stockton, California, USA. The Terminator, Wade Jones the third. Wade Jones took a little bit of time off. Figuring out if he wanted to make boxing, something he wanted to pursue for, the, for, for his career, and took a little time off, let his body heal up, and uh, realized, man, it's his passion. He loves it. He can't live without it, so we see him again, ready to take up that stellar nine and one record and try to try to keep it moving here as he He continues. looks excited to be back in the ring. He is excited to be back. Damas y caballeros, Toscano Boxing Promotions y Chicken Ranch Casino 
presentan ustedes este combate pactado a seis asaltos en la división de peso super ligero. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready. Six rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces. Alejandro Rochín, Max Zúñiga la bandera y Carlos Flores. Your referee in charge of the action. Su referee para este combate, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Interesting the fighter. In the blue corner, he wears the purple and gold trunks. He officially weighs in 140 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, pantaloncillo morado con oro, con un peso de 140 libras. In nine pro bouts, he stands with a record three victories, four defeats, two draws, and one KO. Cuenta con un record profesional, tres victorias, cuatro derrotas, dos empates, y una victoria por la vía del cloroformo. De Toluca, Estado de México. Omar Camaleón Olvera. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears the white trunks with silver and black trim. He officially weighs in 140.8 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, pantaloncillo color blanco con plata y negro, con un peso de 140.8 libras. In 10 pro bouts, he stands with a record, a near perfect one. Nine victories, one defeat, and seven of those victories come in by the fast way of knockout. Record, de nueve victoria, una derrota, y siete de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. And tonight, he makes his comeback, haciendo su regreso profesional from Stockton, California, USA. The Terminator is in the house. Wait, John Sasser. And now with the final instructions, dando las indicaciones finales, Fernando Rentería. Six rounds, seis asaltos. Viene, vamos a una pelea limpia. Vamos a tener mucho cuidado con los cabezazos, golpes en la nuca, en la espalda, debajo del cinturón para estar prohibido. Choca su guante, suerte. Here we go, Wade Jones making that comeback. Got a big crowd here for fighting uh, out, outside his uh, his home country, this, uh, Mr. Jones. But, uh, you know, he travels well. Stockton, uh, they got a lot of uh, pride. That 209 area's got a lot of fighting pride. And they oh, yeah. came down to see what Mr. Jones looks like. He's with a new camp. Recently changed camps here. And uh, says he's, when I talked to him, he says uh, he's got a lot more technical aspects. He's thinking a lot more than he used to. Um, so we'll see if he uses that to set up something big against Omar, the chameleon. I mean, Wade is looking really sharp, just really snappy with those jabs starting right out of the gate. Yeah, he's coming out pretty aggressively. He's super fast. Let's not forget that even if he hasn't been in the ring for a while, that speed is uh, still there. The chameleon asking for the ref to... Take a look at those. Oh, nice shots. body shot from Chameleon, though, as he comes back in the counter. Sometimes, you know, when they're when they're asking, talking to the ref too much, it's like, are you? You should be focusing on on Ray Jones right now. And let the ref do his job. Yeah, the ref is watching really closely, so. Yeah, it's early to be complaining already. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we should be pretty focused on the guy in front of us coming to slang those big ones. Oh, Wade looking really strong. Yeah, he's coming out strong, too, and I expected, you know, sometimes, right, Rafa, when you come off a long layoff, you kind of, like, you know, wade yourself slowly back into the deep end, but he came straight through, jumped right in, cannonballed in from the from the diving board here. I love it, I love it. It just means that he's been preparing for this, and he's not second-guessing his return. That speaks to a good fight camp, so he's probably studied Chameleon really well. Nice little overhand. Connecting on the jaw of Chameleon, but Chameleon's coming back with those body shots. Yeah, he's trying to slow Wade down a little bit with those body shots. His Wade is, is coming in hard, straight line down the pipe. Chameleon, every time he throws that jab, he's lowering that right hand a lot. Let's see if Wade picks up on that. Wade says he's in great shape, a new strength and conditioning, and uh, he, he's ready to do this full six rounds if he has to, but he doesn't think he's going to have to, I believe. I believe he's looking to try to finish this fight before the uh, full six. Oh, nice little rip and slip there from Jones. Jones living up to that Terminator name right now. 
Ooh, Chameleon like switching it up like his name says he might do. Very well at adapting. The Chameleon coming back with a little flurry of his own. Nice right hand, though, from Jones. Shot there, straight right as he drops down, blocks that right hook from the Chameleon. The Chameleon you know, doing better in the second half of that first round than he did in the first, that's for sure. A little faint there from Chameleon to close out that first round here. Not bad though, Rafa, from, from Jones after being off for over a year in the ring. Very good, very good, very technical, very snappy on those punches, especially when he just went out of the gate, he threw like five different jabs in two seconds seemed like. And that's what he's known for. Yeah, he's got a great lead hand. That jab, that hook to the body as well. He likes to use that jab, gets you thinking upstairs and, uh, and try to hit that body shot once you get that hand to block that jab up. Loves doing that. But he said he's, he's got so many Weapons in his arsenal, that's not the only thing he can do as you see his new corners working on him. I mean, you can see it in his corner. He's calm, it looks like he hasn't started the fight at all. Barely breathing hard, just a little bit of sweat going, just getting warmed up, minding everybody it's a six round fight. Wade's looking big, strong, he's, he's looking muscular. He looks like he put on a little bit of a muscle uh, in between his last fight and this fight. Excited to see how that endurance plays out after, you know, it is tough, dude, after being out that long, you know. Let's see if he can uh, make sure he's got enough of that strength to carry through six rounds if necessary. I'm really liking how, how Wade is just, like, connecting that jab and then taking a little step back, not letting Chameleon get too close to him. Clinching up a little bit is Jones. Little little dirty boxing in the clinch there. Alveda's got some size for a 135er though. Wade slowing down a little bit. I think kind of got a little bit of that angst out in the first round there after being off for so long. Now he's getting a little bit more technical and picking his shots a little bit more in this round. Yeah, but Olvera's doing a good job when you're facing a very technical fighter. You gotta make it ugly. Clinching up, dirty boxing. Olvera using the smarts and experience he has here. Oh, wanted that right hand. Oh, they're starting to lunge a little bit more, starting to commit a little bit more. Oh, a little. Ooh, nice one on the exit. Oh, break hook there. Wade using head movement. To, to I'm liking how the chameleon is, is doing his own soundtrack. Every time he punches, he, he says bam and boom. <laughs> He's the bat that old Batman style, <laughs> comic book style. Bang, bop. I'm liking nice it. Body. Nice body in the right hand there by Jones. Ooh, nice body shot by the Chameleon. Ooh, Ooh, too good body shot. Really answered back by Wade. Smile from the Chameleon after he misses a big looping hook there. Chameleon landing punches. It's not like he's not scoring here. It just doesn't seem like he's scoring as effectively as Jones, Rafa. No, I've seen a lot of these fighters, just like Chameleon, with those wide eyes open, start throwing some haymakers, making it look ugly, and they start missing. But if one of those connects... That can change things, exactly. But if, if, if enough don't connect, you do waste a lot of energy when you swing and miss. But Wade is not missing as we close here the second round of this scheduled six round fight. Now Wade is looking surgical with his punches, just taking his time, moving around, and when he sees the opening, connecting 
And, and I, think I, I do believe Wade. Smart, that's a smart way to conserve energy. He chilled out a little bit in that round. And I do believe he had a little bit of, of, of pent up angst as we kind of take a look at what you were saying here. You see Wade using defense, but then you see Alvera trying to kind of make it a little bit more of an ugly smash and grab type of fight as opposed to a technical fight. Yeah, Wade, de definitely you, Wade is a more technical fighter, but Camille needs to make this an ugly fight to, to get those advantages against a highly technical fighter like Wade Jones. And he did a decent job of making an ugly fight in that second round there. He yeah. really did. You and, know? I, and the crowd loves that. They lo yeah. <laughs> and you got to love that machismo of like, hey, let's go. You know, no BS here. Let's yeah. go. You know, trying to kind of taunt almost. You know, t you can I mean mentally you can get your opponent to fight your fight oh, just yeah. by talking a little trash in there, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Giving them a little smile and a wink. No, plus, I mean, that soundtrack, you're getting hit, and the guy's <laughs> yelling at you at the same time. I mean, he's, it can get you going. Yeah, he's, he's making sound effects for his own shots. <laughs> he's like a movie, yeah, Foley artist here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice left hook by Wade. Oh, Wade's coming out with a little more fire in this round. He, he, re, he restoked that fire, and he's coming out with some, some big shots to start this third round, man. I like the determination. I like the focus in Wade's eyes. So level change. Oh, barely hit the shoulder there. Olvera coming forward with a nice right hand and lands after the uh, combination there. Oh, big shots. You start to hear these boys stun nice little right hand. Touches Wade's chin there. Ooh, a brawl is starting now. It is. It definitely is. We got a little brawl breaking out. Nice right hand lands, but man, I tell you, Alvera, he's been in there and taking some big shots. This boy has a granite chin. So Wade is going to have to really, you know, put him together and break this boy down if he wants to finish him. It's tough to hurt him with one. Both of these fighters are getting hit. None of these fighters are looking hurt. No, neither of them have stepped back once and had that look in their eyes. But the way they're throwing and breaking each other down, you got to assume that eventually one of them is going to step back and have that whoa look in their eyes, and we'll see which one first. You hear the Overa chants start to come through the crowd here. They're landing, landing numbers here, making it ugly in the clinch. Landing this good this is definitely what Olvera wants. Exactly. He wants to be up close and personal, have some dirty boxing. And he is catching Wade coming in right now in this third round. <laughs> Wade has to make the community come into his fight. Yeah. He has changed a color that Wade can't see right now, and Wade is going to have to figure out a way. Use that Terminator scanning ability there to try to figure out where he needs to hit this guy to hurt him. But what can it do? I mean, mentally, you hit a guy as hard as you can, and they just keep coming forward. That could be tough on your on your on your mental aggression. It's you know? demoralizing. I mean, you come in, you know you're good, you know you can put people out, and you connect, and you don't see the other guy being phased. And not only not being phased, but coming to rally at the end of a round to land a bunch of looping shots there and get the whole crowd behind him. No, once you start getting tired, that little voice inside your head starts to get a little aggressive, tries to start questioning you like, are you that good? Do you hit that hard? Are you that tired? And then you have an option there. I, I, I got to prove, I, I, I know I am. I'm going to stay the course. Or I got to prove it. And that's what, that's what the corner's doing right now. It's like, hey, you're a champion. You know how to do this. Focus, get back, calm down, fight your fight, and don't get caught up in those sound effects and that taunting that's going on in the chameleon. But the chameleon. You see him landing hand, big shots in these replays, man. He landed some good shots, especially at the end of that, that third round against Wade. No, he's doing everything right in this last round. So he needs to be doing more of that and trying to lure Wade into his game and keep winning some rounds. Here we go. We are halfway through this uh, six scheduled rounds of light. 
weight action, super lightweights here. Oh, now the crowd's behind Olvera. Oh, big one almost hits, almost hits Jones coming in with that jab. We'll see uh, what, what adjustments Wade Jones the third makes here in this fourth round. Because it is a, it's, it's a pretty even fight right now. Wade was strong landing early on. Looks like that jab's gonna be a big part of the game plan going in this fourth. Man, Olvera lands those hooks even when they are blocked, you can hear them. Uh, yeah. A really wide stance that lets him get in close to Wade. Oh, nice slip and rip there with with that left hand of Wade. Beautiful, like oh, we were nice saying. Wade is a really technical fighter. Oh, oh, oh! Is that a little headbutt? It looked like a little dirty dirtiness going on. I couldn't see it from my angle. But you know what, I see a different look in Wade's eyes. Like the, the last three rounds he had this determined, like Terminator look. Now he looks more like an assessing look. Like what, what, what do I see as opposed to just coming forward without any, you know, like, like any idea of strategy. You see him trying to figure out Olvera now because obviously the, the last round wasn't his round. So you see him trying to make those adjustments and let's see if he can do that. But Olvera's not giving him any space or time to make those calculations. No, Olvera, Olvera's hunting him down and, and changing it up, being a true chameleon and not letting Wade figure him out yet. Like you said, the Terminator's using all that AI to try to process what's gonna happen next, but the chameleon keeps switching it up. This is an important round here, this fourth round, I feel, in this fight. This could really make or break for either guy this last minute here, depending on how, how this round goes. It, they both really need to win this round, I feel. Nice a body. Little bit, a, a little bit big breaths from the chameleon. I wonder if he's feeling a little bit tired. He's put, outputting a lot of energy. And then that crowd starts to roar, and he goes even harder, you know? Wade doing some good things here. He's trying. Trying to figure it out. Ten seconds left in this fourth round. Well, here he goes. He's looking for a big one. Oh, but Wade lands a huge left counter hook as Olvera tries to charge it now. I, I, I honestly think what I saw in that round is a, 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 a Wade Jones that said, okay, I, I, might not, I might not knock this guy out. So now I gotta start to think of how I'm gonna win this fight yep. if I don't knock this guy out. I mean, it was beautiful how he was backing up, backing up, and just hunting him down until he got that punch in. As you see that right there, he's slipping and ripping, and this it's towards the end. He's, Olvera just started chasing him, and Wade was able to back up until that last moment before the for the bell, and he hits him with that hard left hook. And that left hook in that round could have been the difference. That one right there, that one right there, could have been where the, the judges weren't sure which way they're going to call it, and then Wade was able to land that bing right wow. there, right on the chin. But what about the chin of Olvera, man? Did you see the shot he just took? And he's able to just keep on smiling the way he does. Oh, yeah. Let's see how much smiling goes on in this fifth round because Olvera is looking like... Like it's it's already starting, sweat dripping nonstop from Olvera. Yeah, he's uh he's putting out a lot of energy just to keep up with Jones, and, uh, and and you know we'll start to see what what that does to him of his technique. He wasn't super technical to begin with, uh, so we'll see if those those punches are even more wide, looping, and uh, he opens himself up for counters, which is which it looks like. Jones is looking for those counters more now than he is trying to finish first. He's trying to finish last in these exchanges. This little uppercut from the clinch from Wade Jones the third. The chameleon didn't really appreciate that. Had some words interchanged at the, at the release. Crowd doesn't like it either. Yeah, he's, he kind of grabbed him from behind, you know, to control him from turning around. But the ref was already kind of hands on the shoulders, stopping it anyway. So. You know, if you were to throw a punch from that position, that would be one thing, but you know, he's just kind of making sure it doesn't get out of hand here. But Jones still got those, now he's got those eyebrows together. 
really trying to calculate and find those big shots. Oh, nice body shot. He's got a boxing match on our hands here, boys. Wade with that body jab again. He's trying to set those jabs up. He's using a lot more jabs. But man, you know, you throw a jab and you got Omera just throwing 2-3-2 two, two right down the pipe no matter what's coming his way. Omera, once he gets nice up close and personal, starts throwing everything. Wade's still looking really good with that footwork. Wade is winning rounds right now. And I, I like that, you know, I think, you know, you realize, okay, ooh, these exchanges. He yeah, has a tough guy in front of him. You know, I'm not gonna try to go all out for the kill and leave myself open. I'm gonna, I'm, I can, I can outbox this guy. I'm gonna outbox this guy. But Alvera with the heart he has and the determination, he's just, he's making it tough for, for Jones to keep him off of him. Yes. Alvera still smiling. Even after these punches being landed. Yeah, I think if you knocked him out cold and he was laying on his back looking up at the ceiling, he'd have a big smile on his face. I mean, this guy is just going to keep on smiling. Especially when you got this crowd behind him the way they are. I mean, every time the chameleon gets, ro gets way near the ropes, the, the crowd just starts getting excited. But Wade keeps slipping out. Nice little upper hand from the California native. I mean, you know, Wade, you know, he's he's slowed the pace down, but still, these are tough rounds to score. I mean, these, these rounds could easily go either way. You know, he's putting in good work, but I mean, he's not, he's not putting anything spectacular on paper to say, I've won this round. And Alvera, you know, he's got the crowd behind him. He's landing big shots, he's coming forward. I mean, a lot of that can, can come into play when these judges are deciding who gets that 10 and who gets that nine, Rob. Now, let's check out just the body language on these guys on these stools. I mean, Olvera is completely laying back on the corner, legs spread out, and we see Wade Jones a little bit, I mean, not even breathing too heavy. I think this might be the round where he lets go. I mean, I think it's time, and I think, you know, as we see, like, these replays of, of just kind of a, you know, un, undetermined uh, uh, scores, you know, you're just not sure. But Alvera, we see him just coming forward and, and making it a real dogfight here, and that can be enough. That aggression, yeah, the aggression when, when it's a 50-50 round, that aggression could be the, 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 the tipping point, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. I think you're right. I think we're, I think Wade needs to go for broke a little bit here, and yeah. he has to hurt him. Um, I think he has the advantage. I think he has a little bit more stamina. He hasn't done the full output of energy yet. Yeah, I could see that. And I think he should just use these three minutes to just go all out. And I think he has the advantage. He needs to land a big one, man. I think he, he wants to land that big right hand or that big left hook. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you can't wait too long. Sometimes you have to make it happen, you yeah. know? And, I mean, if you're not going to knock him out, you need to score points. And that's what the chameleon has been doing when he throws all these combinations and keeps going forward. He's making points. Oh, there's a big right hand. That's the energy I'm talking about with Wade. A little shoe shine action coming from Alvera. I mean, Alvera might be looking gassed in between rounds, but when he comes, yeah. like I said, he's smiling uh, as he walks. He's always smiling outside the ring, but once that bell rings, he's a different animal. Yeah, he turns on the switch as soon as he's standing up, definitely. Because he's still giving a lot of energy and still going forward and connecting. The judges see that, just like you said. If, if the judges want to score it, they can easily score it either way. Yeah, he has, he's been able to stifle Wade's attack a little bit here. But, man, when Wade lands, it's, it's, it's direct. It's decisive like that, that uppercut right there. Two uppercuts in a row landed for Jones. Jones looks at his uh, corner as his corner implores him to go forward. Okay, it's time. It's time to go win this round and win this fight. 
Easier said than done against a guy like Olvera, though. Oh, Olvera's showing a huge chin, huge heart, still smiling here at the last minute of the sixth round. Nice, nice uppercut there, right hand from Jones. Jones landing more clean, effective shots, just landing them less frequently than Olivera's shots. Oh, that's a nice left, right. How is that going to affect the judging on this? If you're, if I mean, if you're landing, was that a slip? Was that a throw? Yeah, it looked like just like a little, little slip throw. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> A little kick out the shoe. I mean, that's that <laughs> that veteran, those veteran little tricky tactics there. Wade's pushing. Look at the like like two rugby players pushing against each other here. Nice little flurry at the end by Wade Jones. Wade trying to use that head to get inside. Pushes his man back. Tries to throw a big shot. Wade is trying to get muscle muscle him around in that clinch. I don't know how to call this one, Rafa. This is a tough one, man, as it goes the distance. Glad as I'm that not final a judge. bell rings, man. I'm just glad I'm not a judge and having to score this. Yeah, that's a tough one. When you the, hear, uh, I mean, the crowd is Olvera. backing Olvera 100% on this. It is his home country, so I expect nothing less. As we go to some replays here from, from the action from this last fight, there's that uppercut that, that Jones was able to land a couple times in that third round. Jones started to find that uppercut as he realized Olvera's going to be coming in and he's going to be there for it, whether it be the head or the body he hits. There's going to be something to hit. Oh, there oh, that it was is. a little, sh a little, a little oh, shoulder yeah. dip, that little MMA, little MMA yeah, move there. I liked it. I liked it. It was a little bit of a judo throw. Yeah, it was. A little, yeah. <laughs> A little John Wick move there. <laughs> Flipping and dipping as the two fighters show respect to each other here. Wade's got a smile on his face. I think he feels confident as he whispers to Pablo. I wonder what he's asking Pablo right now. What you think, Pablo? What you think? Huh. Trying to get a peek at that scorecard. Yeah, yeah, you see him looking over. <laughs> he's, oh, let me do a good eye. Look at it. Oveda imploring that crowd there. I mean, it's not a bad move to try to get that crowd to yeah, get you a little you know, extra point. As these uh, judges are think, making their final thoughts here. Both both corners seem pretty confident, though, that their fighters won this fight here. So yeah. someone's going to be a little upset and surprised here. I mean, we already saw a tie tonight, so I don't know if these judges well, yeah, if we, might be a little bit too fair. We, got a, we might have <laughs> another draw here on our hands. I hope not. The draws are tough. Yeah. Tough on both. Neither guy wants a draw. Neither guy wants to, to, to walk away not knowing. They'd rather lose sometimes than, than, than have a draw. Like, at least I know. I mean... And ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, después de seis rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. Judge, el juez, Max Uniga La Bandera, he scores at 59, 55, 59 a 55. Carlos Flores had it 58 to 56, 58 a 56. And Alejandro Rochin scores it 57, 57 even. For your winner, by the way, of majority decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión mayoritaria. The Terminator from Stockton, California. Wait, Jones the third. Ooh, the crowd is not happy about that. I mean, very different scores from the judges and what we were saying. Very different scores, indeed. But again, what are you looking for? What are you looking for at the same time? You know, you know, aggression, you know, clean striking. Uh, uh, you know, Wade could have easily said, I took that first two rounds. It had a little trouble in between, but then kind of reinitiated himself and kind of took over the fight technically. Uh, it was much cleaner in those those last rounds. And that last round, he was landing some vicious uppercuts. 
Um, again, that last uh, hook in the corner as, as yeah. Alvera was chasing him, that could have won him that, that round. That one's really good. So I, I could see where the, 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 the difference in scores. But, you know, I mean, great fight here as we, as we see some of the, the, the final highlights of that six-round matchup there between Olvera. As you hear, the crowd just get so excited as Olvera exits and waves to them, uh, at, at his fans. But, yeah, man, it was a great fight, you know. It was. It was. Really exciting. It was a tale of many fights there. And, uh, you know, it was good to see Wade come back and, and get that W after such a long layoff. As we go to the tail of the tape here, to Tijuana boys, we expect fireworks at this one here as Vasquez, 32, to the Pantera Robles, 31 years old, 20 fights to 10 fights. So big fight experience for Marcos Vasquez. Uh, he's won 19 and, and lost none of those, nine and one. Both have a high KO ratio. Excited. De Tijuana, Baja California, Eric. Pantera Robles. Congrats, man. Pantera Robles making his way. Nine and one, eight KOs, power in both hands. This man has once fought at 230 pounds. Papa. This man has fought in the pro boxing ranks at two. 30. He's made his way all the way down to 169. Just a great story on what boxing can do for, for someone. Turn their whole life around, become a completely different person. I mean, when you do that weight cut, uh, I mean, it shows determination, it shows power, and if he was walking around with 230 pounds on him, and now he's looking... He's whittled it in fight after fight, lost a little more, lost a little more, and now he's a 170. He's going to be fast, and he's going to be strong. strong. Oh, yeah. But his opponent, Marcos Vasquez. Y también de Tijuana, Marcos Zurdo Vasquez. As I was saying, Marcos Vasquez has got strength and size as well. Again, 19 victories, one draw, undefeated fighter with 10 KOs, over a 50%. KO clip on his record. Man, we got it feels like a soccer stadium in here right now with the chanting going on. Oh man, these two Tijuana fighters. I, I, I we were talking about it, me and Israel before the fight started, that this potential fight of the night, easy, easy money fight of the night here if you want to bet before the card starts. But we shall see, man. I expect a fire fight here. I mean, when you have an undefeated fighter and home court, it's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. But this man, if anyone can rise to it, and we will see, but Pantera is going to make it dirty. He's going to get in his face. He's going to make he's gonna make it look like a war in there, I have a feeling. Damas y caballeros, Toscano Boxing Promotions, Chicken Ranch Casino, Watch Affinity. Y Micheladas El Cejas presentan el siguiente combate pactado a seis asaltos en la división de peso super medio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready. Six rounds of boxing in the super middleweight division. Your three judges score in this bout and ringside. Sus tres jueces, Carlos Flores, Max Zúñiga La Bandera y Alejandro Rochin Mapula. At the sound of the bell, the referee in charge, su referee para este combate, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Enters in the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the black trunks with red trim. He officially weighs in at already 169.6 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Pantaloncillo color negro con rojo. Con un peso de 169.6 libras. In 10 pro fights, he stands with a record. Nine victories, one lone defeat. And eight of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de nueve victorias. Una derrota y ocho de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. El fuerte noqueador de la colonia El Florido de Tijuana, Baja California. Eric Pantera Robles. Man, and he's running across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears the white trunks with blue and gold trim. He 
Officially weighs in 168.8 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, pantalón sí, color blanco con azul y oro, con un peso de 168.8 libras. As a pro, he stands with 20 bouts, 19 victories, no defeats, one draw, and 10 of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un récord de 19 victorias, 0 derrotas, un empate, y 10 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Damas y caballeros, con ustedes, el campeón nacional, peso supermedio, gimnasio Kit Melo de Tijuana, Marcos. Zurdo Vázquez. And now with the final instructions, dando las indicaciones finales, su referee, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Six rounds, seis asaltos. Golpes en nuca, espalda, debajo del cinturón, codos y los antebrazos van a quedar prohibidos. Muy bien, suerte, gana el mejor. The Bubuzelas are out tonight. Oh, we. Oh, we. This crowd is about 50 50. I feel like literally half the crowd here is for one, for Pantera, and half the crowd is for Zuro. As we go to the opening bell here, Southpaw is Zuro Vasquez, Orthodox fighter, Pantera, trying to stick that jab. Both of these are big fighters. Big boys. Looking really good up there power behind those punches. No, I'm telling you, these guys, they can both finish it with one good shot. You can change the whole game with one good shot. We're watching Pantera winding up that right hand. Focus, both men. Calm and collected in there. A lot of respect to each other's fighters. Like you said, both these fighters from Tijuana, they know each other. Oh, yeah. They've seen each other fight. Oh, yeah. Probably even shared a locker room once or twice together backstage. And probably, you know, when you see another fighter your size warming up, you're automatically thinking of what, what would I do if I had to fight this guy. So you know they've been thinking about this for a while. Ooh, left hand barely misses there from Zuro. Oh, that hit doesn't Ooh, miss nice. that time. <laughs> oh, Pantera respecting that left hand now. Kind of trying to paw it out of him here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Zurdo, Zurdo is looking like he's in another place. Yeah, he's very Matrix style right now. He's zoned in. Pantera lands a nice little right hand and gets through. Calls Zurdo in, trying to make it more of a fight here. Nice body shot there. Pantera looking a little bit more emotional. But Zurdo's with that cold-blooded face. He is. He's just stoic almost in there like a machine a little bit. Nice body shot, another one there. Looks like Pantera's got that right hand to the body as part of his game plan here. Oh, oh thought about bringing it upstairs, had to pull it back a little bit. Oh, there it is. Nice little feint, how he was setting it, setting it up with those body shots. This is an intriguing fight to watch, Rafa. Ooh. A little intercept. Some punch defense from both of these fighters. Oh. There we go. There's a nice little you know, right hook. I don't think he hurt him, but he did touch his glove. He, it was perfect timing. Yep. He was coming in, he hit him off balance. I don't think Pantera's hurt, but that's a that's a clean knockdown right there. Oh yeah. Perfect timing on that right hand. Like kind of like a bullfighter. Step to the side, stab. A, yep. a little push punch to the face. <laughs> And I, I feel bad because you can tell Pantera's like, man, I'm not, that didn't even yeah, rock me. that didn't even count. But, hey, but, but, you know. If, hey, if that knee touches uh, the floor, you got to get a count. Yeah, even that glove. He touched, he used his glove to stay up, and that's enough for a ref to call a, a knockdown there. So 10-8 round there. There goes for 
for Zurdo. What does Zurdo mean in Spanish? What Zurdo's is lefty. Oh, lefty. Yeah, so ah. Zurdo's lefty, the left-handed killer, cold-blooded Zurdo. Got it, got it. Because there's two of them on here. So, yeah. Yeah, so. Me being Filipino, <laughs> everyone assumes I'm, everyone comes up to me while I'm doing broadcasts in Mexico and just starts <laughs> machine gun Spanishing me. And I, I'm from California. It's, I can understand, like, you know, get around Spanish, but not that he's telling me how to set this thing, this thing up technically. And I go, oh, lo siento, soy Filipino. But like, you, you, have, you speak any English, you know? Zudo's lefty. Good yeah. to know. Well, that makes sense for the Southpaw here. That's right, that's right. Going to see two Zudos tonight. We already had one Southpaw stance in the previous fight. Got a lot of Southpaws on the card here tonight. Man. I tell you what, Vasquez is sure is calm and calculated in there, but Pantera making it ugly with those three hooks. Oh, he's coming forward with some aggression in this round. Yeah, I like the emotion behind Pantera. Man, this is a, 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 a battle of two different styles and personalities here, right? You got one really calm, really stoic, and you got one just balls to the wall, coming forward, just growling with every shot. Oh, yeah. Starting to land. And the crowd likes this. Oh, 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 Zudo says, you know what? I could come with some, some fire, too. And now we hear the chants. Like you said, half of the crowd is, is screaming one, half of the other. This, this Rising Stars event is just one of Toscano's best so far. Wow. That was a stiff left from Surdo. Oh! Nice one to the body. Surdo's starting to feel those body shots, you can tell. Robles is definitely more committed to the body attack in this fight. Ooh, big whiff from, from Vasquez there. Vasquez in the blue and the and the red and the white shorts and then Pantera Robles, black and red there. Pantera Robles is, is breathing heavy. And I think that's something that we can see with these emotional fighters that start just going heavy, screaming and shouting while they're punching. Sometimes that can gas you out. Well, there is really two types of energy, physical and emotional energy. You know, sometimes you see fighters in back, they're, they're stressed out, they're flexing. By the time they get to the ring, they have no emotional energy left because they're so uh, backstage. So you're kind of seeing that, you know, you're leaking that emotional energy out. It can drain you like it's physical, you know. But I think with, you know, Pantera it can stop coming no matter what, just and like there that. you saw it. He's connecting. And, but I do see Pantera's mouth already open as he breathes. That can be dangerous. You get caught with a good shot and your mouth is wide open. That jaw is disconnected from the rest of your skull and it's easy to get rocked like that. Big win. Almost, that left he's, hand from Zurdo. He's looking for it, he's looking for it. 10 seconds left, big body shots land though for Pantera's. Zudo eggs him on, Zudo missing, whoa, wow. out of the ring. Slips out of the ring. Oh, they touch close. That's that mutual sign of, oh, yeah, we in one right now, yeah, boy. Yeah, we we're fighting. We in one. <laughs> no, that was a great move by Zurdo, and by, <laughs> what a left hand. Yeah, man, he's, he's he's finding a home every now and then for that left hand, and when he does, man, it is, it's popping. Oh, yeah. Big shout-out to Chicken Ranch Casino, sponsors of tonight's event, as well as El Cejas. Each a lot of mixes. We check out some of those left hands and big, those big shots coming from both guys here. Little, little miss there. Look at Pantera just throwing bricks, throwing some bricks oh, at that, him here. There we have that little slip at the end. Man, Pantera really brings it when he brings it. He does. Pantera makes sense. He pounces when he attacks. He pounces like that. Crowd yelling out Marcos, the first name of, 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 of Zudo Vasquez. Ooh, 
slip or like right in the middle of that card. Doubles it up twice in a row, that left hand. You don't see that very often. That is precision and confidence in landing like a laser right between that guard. Vasquez with those little micro movements, just a little feints, just to try to get his opponent to open up. Oh, speaking of oh, slipping yeah. through, Pantera's got that straight as well, slipping through in the guard. Like it, both of these guys are bleeding heavy, putting everything behind those punches. Oh, oh. couple big hooks land there for Robles. Completely switched his face up. Got him looking at the other side of the ring. Oh, Robles starting to land his shots he wants to land there. We know we can see some swelling on the left eye of Surdo. Referee Fernando Renteria warns about the headbutt there. Careful with that head. It's really common to see when you see a southpaw with an orthodox yep. stance. If they both lunge in, that kind of happens. The two little rams. Nice left hand though from Zudo. Oh, big exchange going on there. Zudo fires a combination. Pantera comes right back. Pantera back up to the corner of Zudo. Zudo starts to feel the crowd. Push him on. Big left hook. Everybody's on their feet. Pantera thought it was over oh, for a second. And it's, it's. Vasquez and rocks him back a little bit. Vasquez says, slaps his glove together. Come on. Pantera looked like he heard a bell. Thought it was over for a second. Got to snap himself back into the fight. Yeah, both of them are like, oh, 30 seconds left here. Very high level exchange from both of these fighters. Man, these guys are flurrying like the, crazy. The crowd just jumped on its feet. You can feel the energy behind us. We're barely halfway through this six round fight. Last seconds of the round about to begin. 10 second bell. Here comes Pantera trying to land some final big blows in between here. Oh, both land right at the end <laughs> of the bell. You see the sweat fly off the heads of both fighters as they land straight shots. We have a fight going on. We have a hell of a fight going on right now, Rob. Halfway through this scheduled six rounder in the super middleweight division, as we take a look here at both these guys in this replay, kind of first one absorbs, then the other one absorbs. One gives, the other gives. This is a back and forth fight right here, my brother. I don't know how these judges are, are just turning in their their slips so quickly. Like they, yeah, like there's like they already know. I would be sitting there like, you know, I get another 10 seconds. <laughs> Hey, they've been around boxing quite a bit. And they know what they're looking for. But Shout out to the commission here at Tijuana. These guys have seen some amazing fights happen here. Tonight is not the exception, Toscano boxing. Right? Toscano puts on a good card. I'd say George, Luis, and Israel, they're, they just really know how to put it together. All right, we're halfway through. It could it could be either man's fight right now. This second half is going to be vital for these guys to try to claim victory in this round. Ooh, a nice double left hand by the lefty. Ooh, nice lead hook there from Zuro. That right hand catching the temple of La Pantera as he comes in. them both kind of like resetting right now trying to okay we got to figure it out yeah we're halfway we, yeah, through this. we got to figure this out here we got to try to find the answer but i have a feeling that ain't gonna last for very long and you're gonna see another firefight here any second yeah, they start feeling the pressure of the round starting to end and that's when they crank up the accelerator oh, a little slip there looked like a little slip there 
just wet, wet maybe uh, from the sweat from these guys' foreheads, dripping all over every punch you could see. Ooh, nice left hand. Ooh, slips that one, does Pantera that second left trying to loop around and catch him. Nice combination by Surdo. Both guys. That's a one-two by Pantera. Landed big shots here early in the fight. Now they're both, this is a bit of a slowdown round here. I think they're both realizing we need to charge up because this might go the distance and we can't let it all out in four rounds. It's a six rounder here. And I think they're both getting ready for those last two rounds to try to make a big impression. Surdo, I saw him shaking his head. I don't know if he's saying no thank you or if he's just frustrated. Again, we talked earlier with a, a fighter with, with the last fight with, with Jones. And Oveda, like, you hit a guy so many times as uh, Zudo has hit Pantera, but he just keeps coming forward. Eventually, it, you start to think, what do I got to do to put this guy down? <laughs> 15 seconds left in this round. Yeah, this one, this one's one of those reset rounds. I think Definitely. both guys are trying to figure out, what do I got to do these last half of the fight? And just as you were saying, this is a slowdown round. <laughs> like I expected that, though. I expected that sooner, but man, nice when it little, came, it came like a monsoon, nice. like a like a tsunami. Like you said, I mean, the Pantera knows how to pounce. We saw he has the potential to explode at any time. And if if you get a little too comfortable, it's like, oh, last ten seconds of the round. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cruise this one out. We're gonna rest a little bit. Not today. Yeah, he just hits the gas anytime, just like that. Bang, bang, knocks, almost knocks him down. The ropes held him up there. He would have probably fell on his butt if that if he wasn't by the ropes. We got a good one on our hands here today, oh, ladies and gentlemen. When these big guys start getting a little bit tired, those feet kind of have a mind of their yeah, own. They don't trust. Yeah, you got. You can't trust them as much. Round five of the six-round bout. This is where we might see some fireworks happen. We already got a taste of it. That's right, myself, Brandon Kyle. Rafa Alcaraz calling this super middleweight fight. And Ben, there we go. Five. Hey, taking it, he feeling out in this round. They're going straight for it. Excellent reset round. We just passed in round four, starting off fresh in round five. And that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought they both were taking round four to pull the arrow back knowing that they have to hit the mark in round five and six. And man, they are letting that arrow fly now. Asking for more Pantera, wants to make this a brawl. Surdo's trying to be cool and collected, a little bit more technical about it. But Pantera's energy just keeps coming, wave after wave. It's almost like the longer it goes, the more he gets excited, the more he's coming with. I like how Pantera throws that combination and Surdo just Lands like a sniper, one or two big punches like we oh, saw there. The mouthpiece out. Referee, Renteria takes a little break here as that, and those exchanges of hooks knocks the mouthpiece out of the Pantera's mouth. Having a couple of seconds to regroup. Let's see if they come back hard, and they do. You knew they would. Oh, they both know that they got these last two rounds might be the fight. Oh, Pantera's just coming, non-stop. You know, Zudo's having trouble, looks like adjusting, like he's trying to throw punches in between, but man, Pantera just keeps coming, but there goes Zudo right back with a nice left hand, two of them. Zudo is connecting, but Pantera's just putting on the volume. Volume is right, man. He is just punch after punch, combo after combo. Here we Throwing. go, we still have a minute, 20 seconds to go. And the crowd is trying to get something to happen. You hear the crowd urging both their Tijuana hometown fighters on right now. The crowd is ruckus, 
went pretty much down the middle, like we said. You hear one chant, and the other brings up their chance to match that. And then Sudo hits a nice big left. And then a big right comes back from Pantera. I like how the crowd is affecting the energy of the fight. You can tell that they're feeling it, and they're getting involved. And the we fighters go. are taking that energy, and they're putting it to their opponent right now. Man, back and forth, it's like a Rocky movie, the way these guys are Whoa, changing. big, big right hands landed by Sudo right there, but answered back beautifully by Pantera. Big open mouth from Pantera, though. <laughs> a big smile as well. He's enjoying himself, last 10 seconds of this round. I mean, Pantera with just sheer aggression might have taken that fifth round there, Rob. And lands a big shot to finish it up, pushing Marcos against the ropes here. Wow, <laughs> deep, deep exhale from Marcos as he walks back to his corner. Pantera, deep breaths from him as well. Gonna need a, one of the, the towel guys to come here at the commentator's table, all this Bro, splattering can I get, around. Can I, oh, there we go. <laughs> It has begun. We've got a huge brawl today. Let's go check out some of the highlights of this fight. That's a highlight for sure. I'll, we we can do something for the fans back at home, let you know exactly how beautiful the city of Tijuana is down here in Baja, California. Huge shout out to all the people that came to watch us live Ladies and everybody and watching at home. This round. Ladies and gentlemen, this is round number six. Your final round, damas y caballeros, este es el round numero six. El último. El último round. Like you said, Brandon, this could be the fight of the night. It's, it's shaping up so far to be that kind of fight here. This round's going to determine it. I think this is. I think this could be the swing round. It's tough to score every round, but it'd be easy to say that these guys are all right there. Maybe this could be a, a round to create a draw. You never know. It's but just Pena's corner is telling him to go all in. Maybe they're thinking that he's losing this fight, or they know he can't lose this round. Can't take any breaks. You gotta keep doing what you've been doing to get here, basically. But Marcos, man, I mean, he just is like, stay in the course, man. Never never gets too outside his, his game plan, is able to stay technical. With a guy like Pantera in front of you, it's, sometimes you gotta just bite down on that mouthpiece and get a little dirty yourself, you know? There we nice. go. Nice. Oh, body shot back, but man, he took a nice lead hook there. Big Pantera from Zudo. Zudo just brings out that left hand out of nowhere. Nice, quick. Here it goes again. Nice little two-one combo from Zudo. Oh, big right hand. Pantera's bringing in all the power, stepping into every shot. Man, it's like a mist machine gets turned on every time someone gets caught here. The sweat flying all over the ring. These guys are all over the ropes, throwing with everything they got, just going. Reminding everybody of the first couple rows, you're in the splash zone. Yeah, I feel like I'm at SeaWorld, I'm not too far from San Diego right now. Both of these guys looking tired. Last minute of the round. They're trying to catch that one last shot, man. Something to just show the judges this is my round. Man, Pantera just keeps on coming. Can he put a, a one in that loss record of, of Marcos Vasquez here?
15 seconds of the round. Ten seconds left. Who's gonna get that last statement? Nice left hand from Vasquez. Vasquez misses with the left hand. They're swinging to the final bell. Huge, huge. That was huge way to finish it. Wow. Two hometown heroes tonight. Rising stars living up to his name as usual. Bringing out the best there is here in Tijuana, Baja California. My gosh. I was honored to witness a, a brawl like that between two Tijuana fighters in this historic auditorium. And, and as you see in this final round replay, these guys left nothing at all in the ring. They let it all out. I mean, we saw how the judges scored the last fight. I have no idea what they're thinking. I could give it to either one of these guys. Pantera, I mean, clearly Again, connected it's another, a lot. Kind of like with that, with, that la with that Wade fight, aggression versus clean technical scoring. But I mean, Robles was landing some great shot. I, I don't know, man. I That's why I just get to paid to watch it and talk about it. Yeah. You can't pay me enough to try to be a judge <laughs> for fights like this, my man. No, it's so hard to judge. If we saw Pantera throw maybe 30 punches and land three, and then we saw Surdo throw 10 punches and land three. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, what again, do you do there? Well, we're about to find out here as Pablo's looking at the final scores. I'm going to join our winner, see what they have to say. If there is a winner, <laughs> like, who knows? Yeah, exactly. We could have another draw on our it hands. It could be another draw. Interesting to see what these guys have to say about it, especially here in Tijuana. There can't be a favorite. The crowd anxiously waiting for the results. Now let's go to the center of the ring with Pablo Flores for the official decision. Gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, después de seis rounds, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. El juez, Judge Max Zúñiga La Bandera, he scores at 59 to 55, 59 a 55. And judges Jesse Hernández and Carlos Flores reach an agreement of scores 58 to 55, 58 a 55. Estos dos últimos jueces. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión unánime. El campeón nacional supermedio, Gimnasio Kid Melo de Tijuana. Marcos Zurdo Vázquez. Y también reconocimiento para su rival de Tijuana, Eric, el Pantera Robles. I'm here with your winner, Marcos Vasquez. Marcos, I know you could hear this crowd, this hometown crowd behind you. What does it mean for you to be able to perform in a fight like this and get this victory right here in Tijuana, your hometown? No, lo mejor, eh, super agradecido con la gente, principalmente con toda la gente que vino a apoyar a esta función. Muchas gracias. Emocionado de que gané, la verdad, sobre un gran rival, un rival que venía a la guerra. Estoy bien agradecido con mi esquina también. Por supuesto, agradecido con mi esposa presente, que siempre me apoya. Con los patrocinadores, puro Team Erfa, Francisco Carrillo. Gracias. Gracias a toda la gente. Gracias a Toscana Promotion. Yes, I'm very excited to be here with my home crowd. 
thank you to my gym, thank you to my, my family. They are also here in attendance. I knew there was going to be a war with this uh, opponent. My respects to him. Yeah, speaking of respect, you hit him with some hard shots, and he just kept coming forward here. What are your feelings towards Eric Pantera Robles and, and the war you guys had here today? No, es un peleador fuerte, un peleador duro. La verdad que se ve que vino a la guerra, no 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 da un paso atrás y y esas peleas son las que te ayudan a crecer como peleador. No queremos un peleador que se caiga en el primer round, queremos unos que nos den guerra siempre. Yeah, so these kind of fights they help us. You know, I know he's a strong, he's a top fighter, and this kind of fights, that's what we need. I don't need a, a fast knockout. I need to work my strategy. Okay, is there anybody that you want to thank? I know it's been a long journey, still undefeated. Is there anyone you want to thank for, for, for helping you along this journey of your boxing career? A toda la gente, principalmente a mi esposa. Te amo. A mi esquina. A toda la gente que estuvo aquí, gracias. To my corners, especially to my spouse, that she's here with the fans. Thank you to all of them. Let's hear it one more time for your winner, Marcos Zuno Vasquez. And here we go, watching the replay. What won this fight was that technicality from El Zurdo. But Pantera gave him a run for his money. Obviously, his cheering squad upset with the loss. And here we see those flurries, but that technicality from Zurdo was unmatched. Like he was saying, he's looking for a tough fight, and he got it today against Pantera. Man, you know what? I, I've heard, I've been backstage, and I've heard, you know, coaches come back and ask other coaches, how, how, how are these judges scoring tonight? Because sometimes judges will score on aggression. Sometimes they'll score on more technical, clean striking. And... Each little set of judges is different, you know? And so I think tonight it's pretty obvious that that, that, that technical, clean striking is what's going to win the fight. And yeah. straight, pure aggression might not score on the cards like it does in some in some different yeah. situations. Yeah, aggression and, and just going all out counts for something, but counts more for position, counts more for strategy. Yeah, now and, let's and, go. And, and I expect, uh, speaking of strategy and position, I expect both of these fighters as we see the tail of the tape for Jose Luis Vasquez El Moro taking on Jesus Lugo Garcia in this next one here. We are ready for a, a really technical fight. The Tijuana Baja California, Jesus Lugo Garcia. Lugo Garcia, Tijuana, hometown boy here representing his home soil. Eight and four with six KOs, 180 amateur fights. This guy's got a lot of experience as does his opponent. So even though, like I said earlier, they're young in their careers, they have a lot of experience coming into the ring tonight. So important to get those amateur numbers up. That's the perfect place to learn. That's the perfect place where you have the opportunity to face different types of opponents, different types of styles. And it's so important to get those those wins and losses early in your, in your yeah, career. You learn those lessons early so you don't have to learn them in the pros. Jalisco, Jose Luis. Morro Vasquez. Here we go. Jose Luis Morro, the young buck. Vasquez coming out here. Six time Mexican champion. Actually has a world amateur title as well. Talk about experience. I mean, this is like a, a seasoned veteran going right here. Damas y caballeros, Toscano Boxing Promotions, Chicken Ranch Casino, Watch Affinity y Micheladas El Cejas presentan a ustedes este combate pactado a seis asaltos en la división de peso ligero. 
six rounds of boxing the lightweight division your three judges scoring this bout in ringside Carlos Flores, Alejandro Rochin, and Jesse Hernandez. Your referee in charge of the action, Julio Arana Jr. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the black trunks with great trim. He officially weighs in 135.2 pounds in 12 pro bouts. He stands with a record eight victories, four defeats, and six knockouts. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, pantaloncillo color negro con gris, con un peso 135.2 libras. Cuenta con un récord de ocho victorias, cuatro derrotas, y seis de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Round zero, Jim. Colonia Libertad de Tijuana. Jesús Lugo García. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears a purple and silver trunks. He officially weighs in at 134.2 pounds. Y su rival en esquina roja, pantaloncillo color morado con plata, con un peso de 134.2 libras. And 10 pro bouts, he stands perfect. 10 victories, no defeats, and three of those victories coming by the fast way of a knockout. Presenta un record de 10 victorias, 0 derrotas, y 3 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. El invicto de la tierra del tequila y el mariachi, Tlaquepaque Jalisco, José Luis Morro Vázquez. And now with the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referee in turno, Julio Arana Jr. Seis asaltos, six rounds. Compañeros, ya los pequeños de reglamento. Por favor, dame la limpia, dura, con mucho control, en mucha técnica y disciplina. Señame su vocal, por favor. El suyo, choque guantes, bailamos. I tell you, I... Julio Aranya Jr. has the coolest referee shoes I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I need them. I need them now. Like, Rafa's obsessed with them. He's taking pictures of them. I mean, we're at we're, he's, he's we're on, literally he, at shoe level. <laughs> yeah, he, he can't get over them. I, you know, we got to get a shot of these shoes eventually here as we get into the very first round of this lightweight sixth scheduled rounds. Oh, these guys are fast. Don't blink. No, a lot of a lot of amateur experience. You got a, a, a little bit of a height and reach advantage for El Moro, but I'll tell you what, man. I think that Lugo Garcia has a the technic, technical ability to get inside. If you just gotta play it right, but man, that's a tough that's a tough ask against the long, lean, and very very sharp. Moto Vasquez. That was a very quick left hook that he threw. Barely missed. Garcia. Ooh. time, but got Left got hand hit. lands. Left hand lands for Moto. Man. Yeah, and quick jabs. Sharp. Jose Luis looking very sharp in this first round. Nice jab twice lands though. Very stiff jab. For Garcia. Yep. Yeah. Very he's gotta have to use jab and head movement to get in on this longer, taller fighter here. He's gonna have to use some footwork as well. Looks like he's starting to initiate that head movement there. Gonna have to try to draw Moro in so he can land his combinations. Haven't seen much of a power shot. There it is coming from Garcia. Again, I mean, Moro is Ooh. finding that left jab. Everywhere he throws it, it's connected to something. That left lead hook, too, is looking real sharp. Garcia better keep that right hand high or else that left hook is coming. 
Garcia throwing a nice left hook Ooh, of his yeah. own. Switched it up to that left lead uppercut there and was able to catch the chin there of Garcia. And there's that hook again. That hook is, that lead hand is finding a good home on the right side of Garcia's face so far in this first round. So lucky to have all these great fighters just in proximity here in Tijuana. We got a fighter from Jalisco. Oh, big right hand lands there for Moore. Right at the end of the round. Wow. That was nice. Good way to start off. Nice little pace going, both of these fighters being smart, being strategic. Very technical, both of these fighters. Like you said, a lot of amateur experience yeah. for both of them. But man, Vasquez is showing why, why people have been calling him the next big thing here. As you kind of look, look at that replay there, just everything he does is really sharp. And I, I feel like uh, Garcia's going to have to make it a little bit of, an, uh, of a brawl here to try to be able to land his big shots just because of the length and the precision of El Moro. No, and El Moro has that advantage in the height for this weight class. He's very a long fighter, a very tall fighter. At the end of the day, if he knows how to use that to his advantage, he can be unstoppable. Because when you're the bigger fighter of the weight class, I mean, it's just learning how to use that to your advantage can be huge. Here we go, round two. Scheduled to six, Brandon Kyle, Rafa Alcaraz here, calling these Toscano boxing rising stars fights. Once again, we're back in Tijuana this time, Baja California, the mecca of boxing here on the West Coast. You see a little bit more attention now, a little bit more explosiveness coming from El Moro. It was kind of a feel out round that first round. But you don't see uh, Garcia phased very much. You know, he's still got that focused, determined look in his eyes here. He's trying to figure out how to get in on El Moro, but El Moro's doing a good job at using that distance, keeping that range. Again, that lead hand has been important so far for Moro, jabs and hooks. See able to sneak in a little uppercut, lead uppercut as well last round. See a little bit more footwork coming out of Lugo Garcia. Able to close the distance, and that's good for him. But he's got to worry about that fire back coming from El Moro. And now we got a nice little exchange going on in the middle of the ring. I love the, the change of pace. Good How body suddenly work. these guys just start exploding like we're seeing right now. Good body work there from Garcia. Garcia in the black trunks. Able to get in and land a nice left hook to the body there, but El Moro back to the jab, back to the hook. Lead hand. Ooh, he's looking real fierce, like he's really trying to land some big shots. You see the eyes widening of El Moro. Really focused on landing a big one, and he does land a nice left, but doesn't really affect Didn't Garcia. Didn't move him at all. Garcia just stood there and took it. Garcia, he's built. You can see. Liking Garcia, he was trying to circle away from from that left hand. And having success in the first part of this round, then suddenly he stopped doing that. El Morro Vasquez trying to reach again. We saw both these fighters oh, first that round. that left hand again. Nice little straight right from Garcia. Answered back, nice little uppercut. Oh, that left hand, that one seemed to rock uh, Garcia a little bit. He had to dance all the way to the other side of the ring, try to recompose himself. Garcia's taking some on the chin and not even moving a little bit, not even flinching. Oh, another, a nice another one. He's got to use some a little bit more head movement as he comes forward or else that, that lead hand is going to keep him at bay here. He started doing it at the beginning of the round. You could see he's doing a little more bobbing and weaving his way in, a little bit more footwork, circular footwork, but he gets caught coming straight in on El Moro, and he's getting caught with that, that jab and that left hook like that right there twice. Nice again with the left hook from El Moro. Oh, good exchange at the end. You know, seems like uh, Garcia's a technical fighter, but you know, in this fight, 
he might have to get a little bit more aggressive and just really push his way in against El Mortal because if he wants to do this dance, as we'll probably, you know, we'll likely see in this replay, it's tough. There's that head movement I talked about, and that's what he needs to do more of to close the distance. But when he just starts standing in front of El Moro, it's it's trouble for him. He's getting caught with that left a lot, Rafa. Yeah, Garcia Garcia's having some success with his footwork. He needs to apply it and combine it with, with the punches. Yeah. He has to go in more and pressure, get out. More pressure, right? Yeah. yeah. Because he's, he's doing the dance, he's getting close, and then he's... And he stays there. Once yes. he gets close, he stays there, and he needs to keep moving. He, or, or he, sometimes he might need to just put his chin right in the chest of uh, El Moro, push him back to the ropes, and make it make it dirty. Throw some dirty body shots like he was doing. He threw some great body shots early in the round, but then kind of got away from him. I mean, sometimes you don't want to. You don't want to go into that fire. But when you're a shotgun versus a sniper rifle, you got to get close to land yeah. your bullets, you know? And he's not necessarily a shotgun fighter, but he's going to have to be if he wants to, to, to keep up with the length and the precision of El Moro here tonight. If he makes El Moro miss, he's going to have to make him pay because it's yeah, not he, he can't just uh, leave those untouched. Once he slips out, he needs to answer back with something and then get out immediately because El Moro has the advantage with that reach. Oh, that one sounded nice and hard. There we go. He's got to dig some short shots here. That's what he's going to have to do to be able to take advantage. Oh, Moro landed some clean shots with Garcia along the ropes here. See, Garcia, they're trying to clinch when he gets a little in that. He's in that no man's land of right in between of out and in, and that's where he's getting hit with some big ones. Yeah, plus, I mean, the speed on El Moro is not something you can be too confident about. Nice defense from El Moro, blocking both those punches. Nice uppercut. Now answering back by Garcia. Ooh, Man, nice El little Moro's overhand. showing some defense. He's showing a little bit of everything. Showing a little bit of what, why he was six-time national champ and one-time world amateur champion right now. And Moro nice and tight with that guard, not letting those punches go in. And Panstring back, that hook is there all day. I like how Garcia just explodes out of that corner, but he goes back into it. It's a dangerous place to be up against the ropes, against a long fighter like El Moro. El Moro hasn't really been pushed at all, you know. Garcia hasn't been able to do anything to make him uncomfortable. So he's just kind of just having his way right now. But, I mean, you know, Garcia does Oh, there's a right hand. That's the type of stuff Garcia just has to commit to that. He, he, can't, he can't bide his time here. He's got to commit because the rounds are slowly falling off. We're already in the third round. Moro's easily dancing away with these rounds right now. So Garcia's gonna have to figure a different strategy up because riding the outside ain't gonna work here. He's gonna have to get inside and get dirty. And Moro understands a little bit more about that strategy and we're seeing it right now, how he's backed oh. him up into the corner. And he's just got him pinned. Oh, Moro oh. Like, uh, unleashes in that one though. And I tell you what, I, I, I get it. It's easier said than done against a guy like El Moro. But it, 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 sometimes you're just going to have to start throwing Hail Marys, you know, and hope you, 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 you catch one, get a touchdown real quick, kind of flip the momentum of the game here. Otherwise, it looks like El Moro's going to dance away with this one with an easy decision if he doesn't, you know, he's not, I don't see Garcia being hurt by these punches. No, but we talked a little bit about emotional energy, right? So not having success in these early rounds can demoralize you. Maybe you're not getting hurt, but... You're, you're slowing down mentally, and that makes you slow down physically, yep. and that's where you commit the biggest mistakes. He needs to use that, that, that kind of demoralizing energy to pump himself up and, and fight through that so he can get some advantage. But well, right and, now and it's been a The word you game. said right now, demoralize, 
you know, I, I kind of look, I look at Garcia, and he's kind of looking down at the canvas, going like, "What? What? Like, what's going on? What, what do is, I do? What go, what's going on right now? I, I, I'm a winner. What, yeah. what, how is this happening? I dominate you know? in the gym. Yep. I've, I've seen his tapes. I've been studying this guy, and I just can't get anything yep. to connect. Yep. And you see, you see, he is a bit, you know, dejected in his corner, but being, you know, with 180 amateur fights that he's got. He's coming right, you know, he picks himself up and gets off that, that stool, and he's coming, he's coming for it. But you got to wonder what his corner is telling him. He's, they got to be telling him, you got to get these next two rounds at least if you even want a chance of winning this fight. So go for broke a little bit, right? Yep. Pretty much in the second half of this six-round fight. And for the first half, it's been El Morro. First three rounds. We saw Garcia come out and, and kind of get him to back up, but El Morro can quickly come back at you. You have no, nowhere to go but back. Yeah, you, you want to see Garcia just kind of almost get a fury in his eyes and just say, screw it. I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink right now. And, and maybe, he's coming. He's yeah, maybe, what he's, maybe this is this is the distance where he feels this, comfortable. Yep. This is what he's got to do. He's got to get right up underneath him and throw those short shots like that because that's where he has an advantage. You know, the shorter shots will land for him where they won't land for El Moto. El Moto needs that length there. It's tougher for that longer fighter to catch those shots. And there's that right hand, a short right hand from Garcia, that's what he needs to do more of if he wants to be successful. Ooh, big left hook by El Morro. But I'm telling you what, it's tough because El Morro's so sharp, man. And you make one little mistake, one miscalculation, and you're getting caught with a good one. And that, that, can, that can make it tough for you to want to step in on a guy like that. Plus just the speed on him. It, yeah, it, it, the ones you don't see coming are the scariest shots. He needs to do more of this yeah, right there. Nice little upper, uppercut from Garcia. When it lands, it looks like it's it's got power behind it. He needs to do more of that. Last 20 seconds of this round. Lugo Garcia's crowd trying to cheer him on here. Having a better round than he has in the last couple, but you know, not will it not, be enough? It, will it be enough? Good question. And I, I mean, he, he really kind of let those the fir whole first half of the fight go. Um, and so, you know, he's going to have to do something spectacular here to win this fight, in my opinion. Ooh, big miss right at the end. Better round? Better round for yes. Jesus Lugo 100%. Garcia? No now, doubt. We talked about demoralizing. Now, if you win a, the next round, how does that affect you? Exactly. How does that bring you back? You know, if he can maybe land that shot, that, that shot, where it makes El Moto step back and go, whoa, that might give them that energy. That'll get this crowd, this Tijuana crowd, behind their hometown boy yeah. and, and maybe give him that fire that he needs. But right now, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, it, it might be not enough, you know. And I guarantee you El Moto's corner is getting on his, getting in his butt saying, bro, you need to get out there and, and we can't give him another round like that, you know. But at the same time, you know, if Moro's trying to compensate and not let that happen again. Does he open himself up for a big shot? We'll see as we go into a round number five of a scheduled six. These are the last two rounds. And, uh, you know, El Moro looking real good. Jose Luis Vasquez looking real good in this fight so far. Garcia looking better. Jesus Lugo Garcia in that last round. But let's see if he, he, he has enough to be able to really bring it to him in these last two rounds here. Lugo Garcia. Making the sign of the cross before he came out for this fifth round. Let's see if that's going to help him. Nice body punch, but answered back with a there we famous go. hook. There we go. That's what we need from Garcia if we want to see him turn the tide here. Nice little upper cup by Garcia. Want to see Garcia throw some combinations and then get out. 
which is what Zurdo has been good at doing. Exchanges here in the clinch. What are the judges thinking about this? How are they scoring it? It's punch after punch, give and take from both of these fighters. Nice little slip from Garcia. Morris's corner is asking him to throw, throw, keep throwing. Probably seeing that he's not getting too too much damage. Now's the time to risk it. Ooh, nice left hook. That left hook has been Morrow's money shot yeah. all night long. Really knows how to bring it out. And just come over that guard and land. Morrow's really landed some nice hooks right now. He knows that we're at that range, and he's starting to throw those those short range punches and land it real good. Nice this combination, is Very though. nice coming back from Lugo. Yeah, Lugo. There's the clinch. Garcia is, is trying his best, but man. Almoro Vasquez is looking real sharp Ooh, tonight. Almoro Vasquez has got that look, Brandon. He might, he might want to try to finish it. Oh, He's yeah. looking fierce. Little, He's... little purple under the eye, though, of Elmore. You see the swelling. Oh, yeah. Boxing happening from El Morro. Last 10 seconds in this fifth round. I like what I like about El Morro is he's, he's still out here trying to bang. You know, some guys might say, yeah, you got this one in the pocket. You know, you, 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 got, you, you got this. Go ahead and just cruise your way out of it. But I, what I like about it is that he's, no, I'm just still going out here trying to finish this kid right yeah. now. No, I mean, this is a huge showcase for any fighter to be on this card, Toscana Boxing, and to not take this opportunity and do the best you can. If you're winning, yes, it's the smart move to just win and, and cruise, but it's also a huge, I mean, you can get a highlight reel going and that could just catapult you to some different level of fights. Yeah, he's at a point in his career that he, he's, he's still trying to impress. And boxing is such a big world. Yeah. And it's so hard to get your name in a, in, in a, big, in a big stage in, in, in a main market. And I think, you know, that's what I love about Toscano is that putting on fights of, of really rising stars is the perfect uh, name for Ladies and show. gentlemen, this is round number six, your final round. Damas y caballeros, round numero seis. El último round. You might be watching a world title fight in you know, four or five years ago. And I saw that guy on a Toscano boxing show right Definitely. there. El Moro definitely could be one of those guys. He's hungry for finish as well. That's what I appreciate. He's chasing down. He's not just cruising it out. He's not just dancing around. He's, he's coming forward. He's looking for big shots, putting himself at risk of catching big shots because he wants that He wants that highlight. He's letting Lugo just walk into certain punches, being very smart, very strategic, but he has that look in his eye and he's looking for blood. Let's see if he can find it, man. He is catching Lugo Garcia, but a hey, big props like Lugo Garcia is taking some shots. And I haven't seen him once get wobbled or step no. back or look scared. Not even or, turn away from yeah, those punches. Yeah, yeah, just take them and keep coming. Here we go. This is the action we thought we might have earlier in the last round. Lugo oh, Garcia coming, coming back with some good shots. Right hand again. That left hook, right hand combination has been landing pretty solidly for, for El Moro Vasquez. I'm loving the exchanges in this round. El Moro Vasquez has given it to him, and then immediately Lugo Garcia is like, Here's your change.
right hand. Ooh, barely misses a big right hand. Does Vasquez? Vasquez got, Ooh, got him. Hugo Garcia. He's chasing. He's feeling it. He's smelling blood in the water. Ooh, I think he he's got going him hurt. for it. He's going for a big one. He can feel it, but he caught a big one right there from Lugo Garcia. 45 seconds left in this round. Will he finish it? Oh, I love that. He's got that. Oh, he's see. He's catching big ones here. He's going for big ones, but he's catching big ones too. These guys are all in it. Here we go, 30 seconds. You know they're gonna go for broke here. 30 seconds left. Let's see what's gonna happen. This is Lugos' chance to make it dirty, to throw some Hail Marys. Catch him with that one big one here. Right, this might be the last opportunity he has. Got to hear that 10 second bell. He better go for it. 10 seconds. Moro Vasquez wants it too. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. All six rounds here between these two amateur standouts. Moro Vasquez, Jesus Lugo Garcia, what a battle that was for Lugo Garcia to try to come back in the end. I think Moro was just too much for him. Moro looked really, really good. Real sharp, right? I mean, the heart of... As you see, yeah, you see him do his yeah. thing. Yeah, and chin, chin, heart, composure, all the great things you want to see in a, in a great boxer. You saw out of both guys, just a little too much uh, coming from Moro tonight. Yeah, I think this is a huge learning opportunity for Jesus Lugo Garcia. If he takes this in stride, learns from his mistakes, he can be unstoppable in his next couple of fights because he has a chin, he has a heart. Just maybe some time on inside the ring couple more fights, couple, a little bit more experience. There we see some great sportsmanship by both of these guys raising each other's hands. They gave us a, a great show, as usual, as expected. Toscano Boxing in the house. Tijuana always delivers. I tell you what, they really do. I mean, they, there's very few mismatches. Um, and if it is, it's, you know, sometimes you got to pull a guy in short notice. But the, the fights that they line up, that have they, both fighters have a full camp, and the fights that they want are always well matched. No one is getting outclassed, you know. And you could say that Moro pretty easily won tonight's fight on the cards, but it wasn't a situation of being of of, of Garcia uh, uh, being outclassed. You no. know what I mean? It, it wasn't like it was a complete uh, dismantle, man. I mean, Garcia was able to mount comebacks. It just wasn't enough, I think. And this is my personal opinion. We haven't heard the card yet, but I think it's pretty obvious that Moro was able to land more, more shots and, and pretty much control the fight the whole time. Now we're about to find out. The official decision is ready. Let's hear what Pablo Flores has to say about it. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, después de seis rounds de combate, nos vamos con la decisión de los jueces. Judge, el juez, Jesse Hernandez, he scores it 58-56, 58 a 56. Carlos Flores, 59-55, 59 a 55. And Alejandro Rochin has it. 57, 57, even. 57 a 57. For your winner, by the way, of majority decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión mayoritaria. And still undefeated. Aún invicto. Tlaquepaque Jalisco presente. José Luis Morro Vázquez. Y también fuerte reconocimiento para su rival de Tijuana, Jesús Lugo García.
crowd here cheering on their boy. But again, like we thought, cards were all about El Moro. On tonight's bout here, it was exciting, but uh, yeah, wasn't able to uh, do enough, did uh, Lugo Garcia, to, to get the fight. But uh, great effort, great effort and good sportsmanship between both guys here, much respect being had. You gotta love that about the sport of boxing. Two warriors are getting in there to try to beat the heck out of each other, but after the fight, there's a huge mutual respect that's had. Uh, for someone that steps in there and takes some of the best shots that uh, the other guy has. And here we see the replay. Here we see the replay of this fight. Beautifully executed, very technical, a lot of heart. Both these fighters connected very well. We saw at the end of the fight, El Morro Vazquez. Damas y caballeros, tenemos invitados especiales homenajeados de una forma muy merecida su atención al centro del ring queremos invitar a cada uno de los homenajeados tenemos en primer lugar al primer entrenador en la historia de Tijuana creador del primer olímpico nos referimos a don Pedro Morán Mancilla que pase por favor aquí al centro del ring Guys, we are uh, honored to be joined in the commentary booth by Manuel Jaimez. Manuel was supposed to fight Arturo Valencia um, in a lightweight showdown here tonight, but Valencia came in way overweight, couldn't, couldn't get it down here, um, and wasn't able to make that, that agreed weight or even come close, really, so they, they went ahead and scrapped that fight. But I'm happy to have you in the booth here, Manuel. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you calling me over. Yeah, um, yeah like you said, opponent came in overweight gave him the time to to get down and and he couldn't do it and so we just you know looking out for my my health and looking out for my health trying to take care of myself and so we we ended up calling it off yeah you got a big guy coming in here a real big guy coming in way overweight um, también and, invitamos and, aquí al centro del ring a nuestro amigo concertador de eventos presentador también de una innumerable cantidad de shows. Nos referimos a José El Secre Flores, también aquí al centro del ring. As we're honoring some of the Tijuana legends here of the commission, referees here. Um, again, the boxing history in Tijuana is so great, so rich. Uh, goes so far back and so deep into boxing history that uh, Toscano wanted to honor some of these boxing legends sí, al reconocido entrenador a Don Rómulo Quirarte González. Just some huge names in Tijuana boxing. Some of these are coaches of Olympic warriors. Uh, some of them, one of the first uh, boxing coaches that pretty much set the the base or the, the the fundamentals for what now is Tijuana boxing and how it is so famous because of the efforts of these honorees tonight. Y por último, a otro de nuestros homenajeados. You see him sharing tears in the ring, hugging right now. El señor it's Ricardo Cheto Torres. What a wonderful moment. Tijuana boxing history. These guys have actually really lived and grown the sport here in Tijuana. It's thanks to them that we have just crowds like these and events like these in Tijuana. Man, it, it's just... Very touching to see them sharing these moments here, center ring. The pride that that they carry themselves with and that they did their jobs with while they were part of this sport, building this sport to where it is today. And these are just. Vamos a hacer entrega de cada uno de los reconocimientos que dicen así. Toscano Boxing Promotions reconoce a cada uno a Don Pedro Morán Mancilla. José Secre Flores, Don Rómulo Quirarte González y Ricardo Cheto Torres por su esfuerzo, dedicación y entrega a su labor demostrado, demostrando lealtad, constancia y entrega en este bonito deporte que es el boxeo. El tiempo pasa rápido, las satisfacciones se multiplican y el corazón se ennoblece cuando el camino se encuentran personas nobles con esfuerzos y dedicación a su profesión. Tijuana, Baja California, primero de abril del año 
2023. A cada uno de ellos se les entrega a nombre de Toscano Boxing Promotions este más sentido reconocimiento a cada una de sus carreras. Unas, unas palabras rápido, antes que me vayan. Don, Secre Flores, unas palabras rápido, rápidamente aquí al público presente. Pues estoy muy contento, muy emocionado, porque una empresa como la empresa Toscano, una de las mejores de, de la República Mexicana y del extranjero, nos haya distinguido de esta manera. Mi agradecimiento muy personal para la empresa Toscano y el señor Jorge Toscano. Excelente, mi señor. Don Pedro. Sí. Dígame. <ríe> Unas palabras aquí para el público. Bueno, me siento muy contento porque estoy entre la familia del box y, y mi, mis compañeros, los manejadores. Y los perdedores, algunos también están aquí. Y qué gusto, porque es un triunfo para el boxeo de Baja California y de Tijuana y de México. Así es de que vamos a aplaudir a México. Muchísimas gracias. Rápidamente, don Rómulo Quirarte. Como siempre lo digo, creo que no merezco, pero de todos modos, muchísimas gracias, se lo agradezco a la empresa Toscano. Este, muchas gracias por este merecimiento y pues, que sean felices todo el mundo. Don Ricardo Chito Torres, por último. Buenas noches a todos y le agradezco a la empresa por hacer este reconocimiento y como dijo Raúl Velasco, aún hay más. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias a cada uno de ellos por su dedicación, su aporte a este bello deporte, el deporte que más satisfacciones le ha dado a nuestro país, el boxeo. Despidamos como se merece a cada uno de ellos, José Secre Flores, Don Pedro Morán Mancilla, Don Rómulo Quirarte González y Ricardo Cheteto, Cheto Torres. Fuerte el aplauso para todos ellos. Very emotional moment here, paying homage to these legends of boxing here in Tijuana. But now we got a big fight on our hands here. We got some big bangers. They're not the biggest guys, super bantamweights, but they have huge knockout records. 25 to 26 years old for La Máquina is a little bit older. 32 fights though for Espinoza, 23 KOs in his 28 victories in those 32 fights. So little guys aren't usually known for having that kind of power. But uh, both of these guys can bring it. Miguel La Máquina Gonzalez, 13 wins, nine of those by KO finish or TKO. So the power uh, is coming here, and, and we expect a high-volume fight. You know, this, the lighter weights, guys like in this, the super bantamweight division, you know, they have a high output. We got a lot of cardio, um, and these guys can, can lay some power down too. I mean, we're, we're looking at the records, and both of these guys are, are pretty much uh, – half or more of their fights end up in in KOs so this might be a coin flip for both of them what do you think uh, about Wade's performance comeback after over a year off a uh, year and a half about layoff there uh, able to come back and get that victory tonight Manuel yeah I, I think he looked good um I was sitting right here ringside too so um 
for me, he was, uh, you know, boxing real good. Um, the other, you know, the crowd starts to hype up their guy, the guy they would like to see. And so I felt like the crowd had a big part in what that a couple of the judges saw there. One judge saw there saw it a draw. I didn't really think it, it was a draw. But, but yeah, I think Wade looked good. Um, you know, he was able to change. Like, at first, if you know, he came out super aggressive, and I feel like that was a little just trying to get back in there and taste it, taste right. a little leather, throw a little leather. Um, but I saw him kind of uh, adjust. And, and, you know, he was in there with a guy who has been in a lot of, 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 of rounds and taken a lot of shots and has a great chin. And it was nice to see Wade kind of say, okay, maybe I'm not going to. At first, it was, it, 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 you could smell he was wanting to maybe knock this guy out. But then he started to realize, all right, maybe I can't knock this dude out. He's one of those dudes, those granite chin Mexican dudes. He was a real durable him, guy, yeah. And you see him switch up and be like, all right, I'm going to outbox this dude. You know, So he showed a little bit of everything tonight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that he was able to calm down, get his composure, and realize yep. he's in there with a durable guy. He probably yep. wouldn't be able to take him out, but he, he did outbox him. And, definitely, yeah. definitely. And your guy, man, I, I really feel bad for you. I saw him try to make weight. If it happens, you know, say you got a guy on two weeks and he comes in four pounds over. Okay, man, you took this short notice. I get it. But a guy who has a full camp and has a full exactly. regimen and he should be able to make weight that day. Right. And then doesn't, you know, I think guys know they're not going to make weight before they come and not make weight. Does it irk you at all when it's like, you could have called me yesterday when I when I was in the sauna, <laughs> right. when I was jumping rope in <laughs> right. the suit, and let me know, hey, man, <laughs> if you don't want, if you want to, can we do 137? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might have been like, all right, cool, I can stop cutting too. But to let you get all the way down and then show up four pounds overweight, that's got to irk you a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, that morning I was, I was jumping rope and, you know, I was working that morning to get, get a couple ounces off. So it's like we were in the same boat. But it's like, you got to know, you, it, doesn't, it shouldn't have to come down to those last two hours. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we had a full two hours. It could only get like a pound and a half off or something. So yeah. at that point, it's like, all right, man. It can be a little bit of a sportsmanship type of deal. Like, yes, you're competing. But if you know you're not going to fight, you don't have to be the guy that forces your opponent to go all the way down and keep on fighting the first fight which is the weight cut yeah and i mean it's just like dude uh, you know you could tell his corner was like come on but i'm like man no 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 you don't get to act mad you don't get to be upset <laughs> like, oh come on man just give us two three pounds like what are you talking about man like yeah, you right. don't 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 be mad at me because y'all didn't do your job and get your guy here on weight you know what i'm saying exactly. um but that's the whole camp it's a whole camps thing it's their fault um you have to know and you know what sometimes people have bad weight cuts it's whatever you know but you can't get mad at your opponent and be like nah screw that man you know i will let you come in here with this big weight advantage on me while i was dying like i had to die exactly you didn't yeah. die you didn't obviously didn't die as much as i did because right. i made weight you know I, I like i like what you said that it's the whole camp's fault because usually you put it on the fighter maybe uh you could say something with the discipline or with with but at the end of the day that's why you have a team behind you. It is one-on-one -on -one inside the ring, but outside you have training partners, you have nutritionists, you have people that are helping you out. I guarantee you, Manuel, there's, there are times where he's like, man, I'm not going to run, and I'm going to eat big tonight. And his coach is like, no, you're going to fucking run, and you're not going to eat big tonight. And he had to do it because his camp is on his butt about doing it. Yeah. Um, and that's what it is. It, it really takes a village to raise a fighter. It does. You know, the fighter's the only one in there performing. But I don't think people realize that that's months, years of hard work of somebody, you know, holding those pads, asking you to hit that again, tweaking that technique. Uh, even a sparring partner. Sparring partners. Your girlfriend okay, that's there. All of it comes into play. Right. You know, your mom, Miguel, your dad, everybody. La Maquina <laughs> Gonzalez. Miguel La Maquina Gonzalez. 13 and 6, 9 KOs. Known as a very technical fighter, very composed fighter. Coming in from. Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Jesus. Guadalajara, a little hotbed in the middle of Mexico, a boxing. Some great fighters coming out of Guadalajara. And he's trying to be one of the next.
y de Tijuana, Baja California, Ricardo Hindú Espinosa. Ricardo Hindu Espinosa, very aggressive fighter. He's going to be coming forward. He's going to be looking to land big shots. Again, 28 and 4 with 23 KOs. That is a huge KO percentage for a guy at this weight. They say he's action, action, action all the time. He's going to have that Tijuana crowd behind him, too. As you can hear as he makes his rounds. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate coestelar de esta noche. Y está pactado a 10 asaltos en la división de peso Super Gallo. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing in the Super Bantamweight division. And that's all being presented by, presentado ustedes por Toscano Boxing Promotions, Chicken Ranch Casino. Watch Affinity and Micheladas El Cejas. Your three judges scoring this bout at ringside. Two, three jueces. Alejandro Rochin, Carlos Flores, and Max Zuniga La Bandera. Your referee in charge of the action. Su referee para este combate, Julio Arana Jr. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the black trunks with red trim. He officially weighs in 121.4 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, pantaloncillo color negro con rojo, con un peso oficial de 121.4 libras. En 19 pro bouts, he stands with 13 victories, 6 defeats, and 9 of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un récord de 13 victorias, 9 derrotas, 6 derrotas y 9 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout de la Perla Tapatía, Guadalajara, Jalisco. Miguel, la máquina, González. And his opponent across the ring is standing in the red corner. He wears the white trunks with red trim. He officially weighs in the limit, 122 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, pantano blanco con rojo, con un peso de 122 libras. He stands with 32 pro bouts, 28 victories, 4 defeats, and 23 of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 32, de 28 victorias, 4 derrotas, y 23 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the WBO Latino Lightweight Champion, the WBO Youth World Lightweight Champion, and he's a one-time world title contender. Damas y caballeros, con ustedes, el campeón latino, peso ligero OMB. Campeón Mundial Juvenil OMB y ex contendiente por el Campeonato Mundial Gimnasio Pedro Morán de Tijuana, Ricardo Hindú Espinosa. Y now giving out the final instruction. Con las indicaciones finales, su referee en turno, Julio Arana Jr. Ten rap. 10 asaltos. Caballeros, ya lo expliqué el reglamento. Por favor, dame pie limpia, dura, con mucho control y con mucha disciplina. Señor maestro vocal, por favor. El suyo, choque guantes, bailamos. Here we go, it's time for these super bantam weights to dance. They call him Hindu because he has a mole right in the middle of his forehead. So they've called him that. that was, they got that nickname quite some time ago, and then Miguel La Máquina, as everybody knows, in Spanish means the mannequin, because he's so chiseled, oh, he's not because he's chiseled like a, oh, it means the machine, oh, it means the machine, the machine like everybody knows, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to make a bad joke. Um, as we touch gloves here, and these two orthodox fighters set to dance, 10 scheduled rounds in the super bantamweight division, this co-main event. We're joined here, myself, Brandon Kyle, by Rafa. Alcaraz and Manuel Jaimez, former WBC youth champion. 
a record of knockouts. He's coming, uh, aggression is one of his, his strong suits, is what they say. Saw a lot of power in that left hook to the body starting off the, the round. You already see the reddening on the forehead of La Machina, Gonzalez. He is, I said he's aggressive. It's aggression versus technical fighter here. And uh, it seems like it's going to be one of those things. Now, you've kind of had to be, I've seen you be both of those fighters, uh, uh, Manuel. And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts as these two guys start to square off here in the middle of the ring? Yeah, they didn't wait. They didn't wait at all. They um, got right to it, man. Well, the Hindu ain't playing around here. They said that he was aggressive, and man, now you're seeing why. So oh, God, good. he's already putting it on several times on La Machina. La Machina's going to have to fight a real perfect fight. He's red all over the top of the head here. Yeah, he is jumping sides. on him. Both sides of the forehead and the body are seeing some, some very red spots. Yeah, at the weigh-ins, I was really excited to see these guys. They both look like they're in really good shape. And then looking at their records, I was like, man, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Again, we got some potential fight of the night action here, but La Machina is going to have to do a little bit more to slow the onslaught here of, of Hindu Espinosa so far. Having his way, just really just really bulldogging him, Manuel. Yeah, he just, just, he just looks stronger right now. And his, his punches are affecting him a lot more than, oh. Oh, now we see a huge oh, cut on the forehead. Oh, my God. Wow. Those, those leaking punches. bad. He's leaking real bad. Oh, my God. Huge cut opened up on the forehead of Miguel. Just gushing. La Gonzalez. Just gushing on the blood. 100%. Oh, gosh. It That's is just, gushing. It is gushing bad. It, his corner's going to have a hell of a time. They got a big job to do in between rounds. Seconds 14 left. seconds. You can see Hindu is smelling blood in the water. There's blood all over the ring. It's all over this. everybody. Three seconds for La Machina to make it out. Some crazy blood spatters going on here. That is the end of the first round. Wow. Manuel, have you ever been cut that bad? Have you ever... Been, been had the experience. I mean, he was. Look at the all the that blood leaking blood out. That blood is gushing out. I had a cut in my fight last year here in Tijuana, but that was just right over my eyebrow. It wasn't that bad. Man. That was that's gushing. That's pouring everywhere. Like how how is he? I don't even know how. What what what? He hit an artery. I mean, geez. I I don't. I can't remember last time I've seen that much blood leak from a cut, man. As we see the replay here, maybe I don't know. I don't know if it's a headbutt or if it was a punch. Oh God! Look at it leaking. They keep. I, they maybe a headbutt in the exchange here. It looks like the replay's a little wonky. Oh, they stop it. That, that, oh, that. Stop it. Yeah. As bad as that cut looked, I think that's the right decision. Just the power on the Hindu. The Machina doesn't want to see this fight end like this, but that's the way the fight game goes. I don't know if it was a headbutt or if it was a punch. We're going to find out here with the yeah. official decision. Hopefully it wasn't a headbutt. Maybe we'll see both of these guys fight another day, but yeah, it, it was one-sided. The Hindu was dominating. We saw it from the, the get-go. Hello, hello. Yeah, that was a rough one there. That was a, a very aggressive start. We're going to go in there and talk to Hindu. Yeah, Let's see how this fight ends. I, I'm interested to see the decision. Yeah, the blood is not stopping. We're going to check out and see what the judges have to say about it, especially the doctor that is, is checking him out. I mean, there was a lot, a lot of blood in this fight. We haven't seen the replay. We're just trying to wait and see what the replay looks like. Hopefully we can have some answers because we don't know if it was a punch or a headbutt. 
think everybody in the crowd wants to know. Do you, did you see something, Manuel? Uh, um, not really. I, I didn't see anything. I just seen they they were in that corner. Indu was teeing off on him, and then they come out of the corner, and he has a big old gush on his forehead. So yeah. it's hard to tell if it was a headbutt in that in that exchange or if it was a punch. I mean, luckily the Makina doesn't look hurt at all. We can see it's a deep cut, but it's small. Usually forehead cuts are, are very scandalous, like the one we saw. Uh, there's a cleaning crew making sure that the ring is is ready for our next next two fights. It's going to be interesting to see how they call this fight. Right. Wondering if we get to see the replay and, and determine if it was a headbutt. I mean, he doesn't look too angry about it. Might have been a, a just a, a very strong punch. Yeah, it was a lot of punches he was taking in that in that corner over there in that little onslaught. So it's hard to tell. Looks like they're saying it's a no contest. Brandon left us for a second to see what he could find out backstage. We're returning here. Let's see if he has some insider information. Ladies for and us. gentlemen, in yeah, we're going to find out right now there was a no contest due to headbutt. The blue corner to continue. Damas y caballeros, un cabezazo accidental le impide a la esquina azul continuar. Por lo tanto, tenemos este combate se declara sin decisión. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a no contest. That's a bummer. That was getting ready to be a good one. Yeah, he's looking really good. A uno dos y pronto sí. A uno dos sí. A sí. A uno dos y pronto sí. Well, unfortunate result, but remember that happens sometimes. You know, got an aggressive fighter like that, and uh, sometimes it, it can happen to where, with an aggressive fighter like that, a clash of heads happens. I mean, it's not like it was an intentional thing. It's just one of those situations where it happens, yeah? Yeah, he was, um, Indu was coming forward the, that whole round. He wasn't, he wasn't gonna stop coming forward, and, and as you see, I mean, it was just a, just a flurry there. They got in close, and that must have been, oh, right there, right? That's right where it was. Yeah, that replay kind of shows a little bit of, uh, it, it doesn't take much, too. With two, with two people's, the top of their heads clash, the skull is right there. It really doesn't take much to open up a cut, and it's unfortunate it happened by headbutt. But I tell you what, he was bleeding. So I'm walking in the ring, my, my shoes were, every step there, I could feel them sticking. Yeah. As the blood dries on the canvas, they might even need to take a second to, to clean that up before the next fight, just because I, I can't, I've can't. i called a lot of fights. I don't can't remember the last time I saw that much blood uh, hit the floor of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a canvas like that. I mean, that was just, that was tough to see. And it's tough. Oh, looks like we got a proposal here. Now that's exciting. That's a way to... to uh, yeah, I know he wanted to do Make that with the victory, but, you know. <laughs> hey, she said yes, so it's a huge victory tonight. Oh, Pablo's going to Pablo's gonna give him the mic here. He's going to. La verdad es emocionado por decirte esto, y yo sé que no me equivoco, y quiero que estés conmigo toda la vida. That's a first for me. I haven't ever called a proposal before. In his hometown crowd, I, I think that's why he came out so aggressively, because he's probably nervous. He just wants to finally pop the question, so he's trying to finish that guy in the first round so he can get down on a knee and see what she said. <laughs> what a way to do it. In yeah, I know, he, I know he wanted to get that victory tonight, but I, I have a feeling they'll run it back. That'd be a good idea, right? Yeah. Pack crowd, home court advantage.
Well, guys, that was a really short uh, short round here. What, t tell me some of the fights that you enjoyed so far, Manuel. Uh, you know, do you, you got to fight the night. How about that uh, that uh, Vasquez uh, Robles, the Pantera, the red-haired, uh, the 168-pounders that went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh, the the shavehead uh, Marcos Vasquez taking on the the, the redhead of uh, of Pantera. What did you think about that fight? Yeah, that was every round pretty much was action-packed. They, they were going back and forth the whole time. Le, les quiero pedir una disculpa, la verdad fue un cabezazo accidental. Yo esperaba darles una buena función, una buena pelea, pero lamentablemente pasó el cabezazo. Es algo que pues no podemos evitar, por así decirlo. Pero pues muchas gracias a todos los que participaron, que están aquí presentes. Y pues más que nada agradezco a, a mi prometida ahora por estar aquí conmigo. Maybe let the crowd at home uh, in America know what he said. Sure, he was apologizing to the crowd for the accidental headbutt. Unfortunately, it's something that can't be avoided, uh, but he's really excited for what's to come with, with his now fiance uh, and now being engaged uh, to start this, but, but he pretty much just apologized to the crowd. He really wanted to make this an exciting, memorable fight. Uh, and to finish it off with with a proposal. Oh yeah, that that was that was tough. That was a tough way to to end that 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 fight there. They just get started, um, just action. It was hot. I mean, he was landing good shots to start the fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, La Machina was all red around the forehead and the body. You could see that that he was landing some shots, but unfortunately, that little accidental headbutt, uh, no contest. There wasn't enough rounds in the bank to score it. So you just got to call it a no contest at that point, though. What about that opening fight, the female fight? Man, talk about nonstop action from start to finish, right? Yeah, they came out swinging. They didn't stop swinging until that last bell. I was, I was really, I was really impressed by by their fight. I was, was just impressed fight. that they could keep that pace for. Because I, I yeah. know, I mean, in the back of everybody's head, I had to, we had to think like, no way they could keep this up for four rounds, right? But I'll tell you what. Uh, Katrina Sandoval, man, I thought she was going to gas the way she was coming and, and swinging, but she just kept on chunking, man, and they kept landing. Uh, her opponent, uh, uh, Carla Valencia, was able to start to counter, but, you know, when you got a, a, a shorter fighter versus a much taller fighter like that, uh, Sandoval did what you have to do. You got to bite the bullet, you got to get it close, and you got to land short shots, and she was able to do that yeah, for, for the most part all night. She was landing some solid shots. I was surprised that... Um her opponent was taking them and she was eating them and she kept she she stayed she stayed on her feet she was throwing punches yeah she was definitely slinging them and then uh obviously jose luis check check por favor yeah oh looks like we're gonna Get our national anthem for Mexico here as we start our get ready for our main event of the evening, guys. Nice. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero al prestar y el vido, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonar o rugir del cañón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra. Yo patria tu sienes de oliva de la paz de la
Great way to start off here with the main event. Tail of the tape. We have Samurai Sosa from Tijuana against Ivan El Surdo. It's going to be an interesting fight. The age difference, almost 10 years the senior with Ivan El Surdo Alvarez. And we have the record 22-1, one loss by Damian Samurai Sosa. And 31-14 and for Ivan Surdo Alvarez. 21 KOs for Surdo. Damian has 11 KOs underneath his belt for his record. It's going to be an exciting night for this main event. Here we go, we have Ivan Zurdo. Another lefty here, Ivan Alvarez. 31 and 14, 21 KOs. 40 fights worth of experience here. You hear the booze coming because... I, I heard for a moment of silence and then the booze started because people didn't know what to do. He's <laughs> fighting hometown hero. As you heard Pablo call out the name and you hear the crowd start to get loud, it's Damien Samurai Sosa. We've seen him a lot of fights, I know. Manuel, you, you fought on plenty of cards with Damien, yeah? Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you how many, I can't remember, but we've been on a bunch of cards together, and I, I always love to watch those fights. He's, always, he's a he's good guy, crazy. too, isn't he? Isn't he oh, one yeah. of the nicest guys yeah. backstage? He's, a, he's one of the coolest guys. He's always gives me a hug. Big gives smile, a hug. right? Yeah, yeah. we saw him fight, he came out in a samurai mask. Yeah, that's, that, that, I think that's awesome. Let's see if he's coming out. Maybe he's got the whole headset this time. He needs to come out in the whole suit one day. Take 20 minutes just to strip down ringside. With a katana. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, the, donning his samurai mask. He is definitely on the rise. He's a big 153 pounder, super welterweight, 22 and one, 11 KOs. We've seen him on Toscano Boxing several times. He's had some really impressive performances against some really impressive opponents. Always seems to rise to the occasion and he's got another tough fight on his hands here today. I mean, the, the star aura that he carries around with him is undeniable and each time we see him fight, it just gets bigger and bigger. And this is one of the biggest events we've seen him in here against one of his toughest opponents. It's time for boxing, and it's time to rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your main event of the evening. Set for 10 rounds of boxing in the super welterweight division. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate estelar de esta noche. 10 rounds en la división de peso Super Welter. Y es presentado por Toscano Boxing Promotions, Chicken Ranch Casino, Watch Affinity y Micheladas El Cejas. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Alejandro Rochi, Max Uñiga La Bandera y Carlos Flores. Your third man. Inside the ring, at the bell. El tercero en la superficie para medir las acciones, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Ahora bien, amigos que nos siguen a través de la señal de Fight Hub TV en YouTube. Estamos en vivo desde la meca del boxeo en México, el auditorio municipal Fausto Gutiérrez Moreno, desde la frontera más visitada del mundo, Tijuana, Baja California, México. Ajusten sus cinturones. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the silver trunks with blue trim. He officially weighs in 
152.8 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, pantaloncillo color plata con azul, con un peso de 152.8 libras. In 45 pro bouts, he stands with 31 victories, 14 defeats, and 21 of those victories coming by the best way of knockout. Presenta un récord de 31 victorias, 14 derrotas y 21 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout de Ciudad Obregón, Sonora. Y va Zurdo Álvarez. And his opponent across the ring is standing. In the red corner, he wears the black trunks with green trim. He officially weighs in at a ready 153.6 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con verde, con un peso oficial de 153.6 libras. In 23 pro bouts, he stands with a record, a near perfect one. 22 victories, one defeat, and 11 of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record, casi perfecto. 22 victorias, una derrota y 11 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Introducing the WBO Latino Lightweight Champion. Damas y caballeros, con ustedes el campeón latino OMB de los pesos super fuerte. Puritito Tijuana, Baja California. Samurai. Samurai. Sosa. And now with the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referee turno, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Ten rounds, diez asaltos. La pelea estelar, hagamos un nuevo espectáculo, respeten las reglas, van a chocar los guantes y que gane el mejor. Mucha suerte. Big shout out to Pablo Flores, our ring announcer. This year marks 20 years he's been in the ring announcing game. I know he doesn't look that old, but yeah. He, he started is. young. He started, he started young. young. And as much as he annoys me, God, if he's not the best ring announcer in Mexico, I don't know who <laughs> is. Congratulations on 20 years in the game, Pablo. Also, we got some big stars. WBC, Interim Light, Flyweight Champ. Kenia Enriquez is out there. WBO Flyweight Champ as well here, representing Tijuana, one of their great champions, female fighters, representing Tijuana Boxing here on a world stage. And, and we're looking at... Damien Samurai Sosa, which many believe might be the next Tijuana world champion. He definitely has shown that to be the case up and coming potential world champion. Let's see if tonight he can make that argument even stronger as he takes on Ivan Zuro Alvarez. Now his nickname is Zuro, but he's coming out in an orthodox stance. Interesting. I wonder if this is a... A little bit of a, of a tactical. Oh! It, it seems to have worked, Brandon. I mean, maybe Samurai was expecting a different fighter to Samurai come up. Samurai was ready for that orthodox stance of Sudo. And Sudo catches Samurai, puts his on the canvas. Now he's going for the kill. Samurai's being tested like he hasn't been tested before in the Toscano boxing ring. Let's see how he answers this test. This is huge for Zurdo. What an opportunity to do this in Tijuana. I don't think that, that da Damian Samurai Sosa was ready for the orthodox stance. It obviously caught him off guard. Manuel, what are you thinking about that early knockdown? He's looking good right now. He's, he looks like he's getting himself back to. He looks like he's getting himself back together. He hasn't got caught with another big shot, so he just needs to keep that hand up. Oh, again, that uppercut hurt him. He still rocked here, Zudo. A minute and a half left in the first round. Still, Samurai needs to gain his composure. That's two two knockdowns in one round. He needs to clinch up. He needs to slow down the attack of Sudo. Sudo's going for everything. Sudo's going for broke here. Samurai answers back. Oh my God, the whole crowd. Samurai Sudo throwing bombs. He can't, get, he can't take another shot. Sudo is going for it, but he cannot get knocked down again. Samurai has to stay on his feet. He's got 60 seconds left. 
Samurai is looking hurt. This could be Surdo's opportunity. But Surdo's uh, looking a little gassed as well. He's thrown a lot into these punches. But he's connecting them. Those uppercuts are really hurting Samurai. The crowd is is trying to get Samurai. Samurai has to clinch up. He's got to try to stall out the punches of Sudo right now. Sudo's coming forward. Samurai has to try to figure a way to get out of this first round, man. He's in so much trouble, Rafa. Takes another big left hand and another right. He's got to, he's got to find a way. 30 seconds. He's looking hurt. He needs to survive this. The crowd is telling him to clinch up. He's taking punches still. One more good shot could put him down. There he goes down. 18 seconds left. Deep breath from Samurai. He says, no, I'm good. He's got to survive. What a round for Zudo to start it off. Another big one. He's got two seconds. One second, and he survives the first round. Saved wow. by the bell. Manuel, wow. Three knockdowns wow. in the very first round. I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> I don't think any of us were. The crowd, the people have their hands on their head. They don't understand what they're watching. Samurai has never been in this much trouble in the ring. Oh my God, just look around. All these people's his jaws are to the floor. They can't believe it. People are praying behind well, Let's us. look at some of these knockdowns. That first left was perfect. On the button, he didn't see it coming. Then another one. Same one again. Bing, right on the chin, puts Samurai down, keeps him rocked. Then the top of the head, he hit him on that little temple shot. Puts him down on his butt a second time. And then just overwhelms him. Sudo didn't wow. throw a lot of punches in that first round. Sudo's got some blood running, running down of his nose. Samurai so, really needs to switch up his game plan. Sudo's now with a southpaw Now stance. coming in southpaw. He's got to earn some respect right now, man. He's got to back up Sudo somehow. Sudo's supremely confident coming forward. Both of these guys leaving it all, trying to finish it in the second round. Man, it feels like 10 rounds have gone by already. It's only been one round. Now this is a Toscano main event. He's hit again. Zudo showing amazing skill, putting combinations together as Samurai tries to retreat. back in the orthodox stance. You can hear the chants of Samurai. The hometown hero is being put to the test. Already been knocked down three times in the first round. Finding his mark though a little bit more, Manuel. Finding his mark a little bit more, yeah? Yeah, he's gonna have to find his rhythm. He's gonna have to really dig deep. That's a, that's a big hole he's in right now. keeping his composure, connecting those shots. Samurai landing more, but also getting landed on. Zudo still looking composed. Little blood of the nose from Zudo. Samurai's feeling a little bit of sense of urgency. Oh God, Samurai catching shots as he comes in. Big left hooks from Zudo. The crowd is going crazy. Everybody tonight is turning into the corner for Samurai, telling them what to do. Just, I mean, fingers crossed, just hope, praying to God that he can make it through this early onslaught of, of Alvarez. Alvarez sticking with that orthodox stance. He's had success with it.
10 seconds left, round two. Looks like Damien has kind of got his chin back. He's got his legs back. He seems like the old samurai once again after that first round three knockdown onslaught of Zudo. Manuel, let's talk about this. The punch that seems to be hurting Damien is that lead left hook, which is usually Zudo's power hand. But when you switch stances right. now, no. that lead hand becomes a lot stronger than usual. That lead jab, that lead hook, that's, that's his power hand throwing that. So it comes with a little extra pop on it, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that was a better round for, for Sosu, though. I think I think he started to find his rhythm a little bit now. He's starting to get his feet underneath him. And is this a 10-round fight? 10 rounds. OK. He's got time. He's got time, but he's going to he's gonna have to turn it on. And yeah. Sudo, Sudo output a lot of energy, right? Rafa, in that first round, I mean, that I mean, when you were going for the kill for a whole round, that can drain no, you quite a bit in a 10-round fight. The adrenaline. You see your opponent there. You want to finish him. And then to have a second round comeback that Samurai did. Referee. Ah, the free. old spill the water trick and give your guy an extra 15 <laughs> seconds. That's smart. That's speaking of good cornering. Zudo coming strong. He's looking to finish every first half of every round, it looks like. I think maybe Samurai was expecting Surdos' game plan to be a, a more of a 10-round fight when Surdo was coming in thinking, round one, two, three, and we're out. I think Zudo said, I'm coming against the hometown hero. I need to hurt him early, hurt him often, and try to finish him to win this fight. I was seeing Samurai a little bit more, throwing a little bit more. Yeah, he's opening combinations up a little bit more. Man, that lead left hook is a thumper that from Zudo in that orthodox I, position. I could feel that, that shot. Samurai lands a nice right hand. Zudo back. Zudo's got some wear and tear on his face as well. He's catching punches. And Samurai is angry now. And the crowd is following him up. He's gone for it. This crowd is going crazy. What a fight to finish off this Toscano boxing card. And now we got a cut over the right eye of Surdo. And the people are loving this. Samurai chants have begun again. This is the most ruckus crowd I've ever been a part of calling fights. You feel like all of Tijuana is in this arena right now. And here we go. Nice right hand by Samurai. And followed up by a huge left hook by Surdo Alvarez. Everybody's phone is out tonight. What's that? Rafa, I'm sorry. I was recording with my phone right now. Of course. Everybody is tonight. They're waiting for something huge to happen in this third round. Oh, big shots from both men back and forth. Blood and sweat flying with each exchange. Both men bleeding. Half a minute left in this third round of 10 rounds. Sudo still got pop on those shots. No indication of any of these fighters wanting to go the distance. They're trying to end it. Oh, big shots from Samurai Sosa. Rights and left, both landing. Sudo backing up. Good body shot. Ten seconds left. Third round. Nobody's caring about the points anymore. Wow. It's knockout or nothing. This is the fight the people came to see, and they're getting a show tonight. No doubt about that, Ralph. No doubt about that. And well, it seems like Samurai is starting to claw his way out. And take a look at this uh, replay and tell me what you see, Manuel. Yeah, just also feeling the urgency. And he needs to get back in this fight, and, and he's doing it. He's, he's pushing Surdo back now. 
So do still got some pop though. He's still yeah, throwing that some left shots. Game, when he goes in a, a orthodox position and throws that, that left hook is still thumping the yeah. gloves, even when Samurai's able to block it. Yeah, he's throwing haymakers from the jab every time he's in orthodox stance. That's a huge advantage that Zurdo is tapping into tonight. A cut over Zurdo's eye. Here we go, fourth round. Myself, Brandon Kyle, Rafa Alcaraz, Manuel Jaimes calling it ringside for Toscano Boxing Rising Stars at the Auditorio Municipal here in the heart of the Mecca of Boxing on the West Coast, Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. We've had a hell of a card, and we've had a hell of a start here with Sosa being put down, not once, not twice, but three times in the first round, clawing his way back, slowly gaining momentum in the last three rounds since that first. Zudo, though, still got popped, still landing shots. Crowd, full throat. The entire fight so far. Samurai reactivated that cut over, over Alvarez's left eye. Oh, big right hand for Samurai. It's a dangerous cut. We already saw one stoppage tonight. Zudo starting to swing and miss a little bit more. Ivan Alvarez. Still landing big shots, but taking more and more as the fight goes on. Huge combination there by Samurai. And this crowd is on its feet tonight. Round four of 10. That left hand of Zudo's got a lot of pop in it. Every time it lands, even if it's blocked, you hear the whole thing. Whole arena hears that pop. Body shot from Alvarez. Oh. Three shot combo coming back from Samurai Sosa. We're about to find out how loud Tijuana can get behind Samurai. If Samurai could manage to pull off a victory, especially a, a, a finish in this fight, you're gonna hear this roof get exploded right off of this building by the noise that's gonna be created by that victory. Everybody's waiting for a knockdown. Is it gonna happen? 45 seconds left on the clock. Big shots landed for both fighters still. Huge hits for both of these fighters. Will they be able to keep up this pace? Nice body shot. Manuel, that body attack could be important in a 10 round fight, right? Yeah, especially, it's still early. Round four is still early. That body looks really important right now. <laughs> 10 seconds left. Just get ready to hear this crowd erupt. Man! Both guys still landing huge <laughs> shots! <laughs> I mean, fights like this just get me smiling. It's one of the best events I've been able to call here. What do you see, Manuel, as we look at this replay from this last round, round four? These guys are just, man, choking blows. Man. Surdo, Surdo seems to be throwing like like wild shots, trying to land another big, another yeah, big yeah. left hook or another right hand, just big shots. And I feel Samurai is kind of trying to box a little more. Yeah, but he's laying in some good shots. And look at Zudo, you see him deep breathing deep, kind of blinking that eye out. That's a pretty bad cut on Zudo's eye, right? Over his right eye. Yeah, he's got a decent cut there. And uh, Samurai keeps trying to open it up. Oh, it's pretty deep. I just saw it. It's a huge cut over the, the right eyebrow of Surdo Alvarez. I think he he might have opened it up himself by just wiping off the Vaseline from it. Let's see if Samurai tries to... Oh, big swing and a miss. 
That one would have hurt if it would have landed from Alvarez. Nice short little jab. Both fighters being knocked around tonight. Nice more body attack there from Alvarez. I mean, to Alvarez's midsection from Samurai. Oh, nice combination, body attack from Alvarez. Said, watch the back of the head. Does referee Fernando Renteria warns Alvarez. The crowd complaining, they feel like another shot to the back of the head landed there. That's the one that's been connecting for Samurai. But Zurdo comes. Zurdo has got a reinvigorated attack here in this uh, fifth round. Zurdo charged up again, back into his southpaw stance, lands that left again and again. Nice short right hand, then a long right hand, then a short right hand from Samurai. Samurai starting to find a home for his straight right hand. I think Samurai's getting a lot of success with the volume. As long as he's throwing punches, Surdo can't get that power shot in. Offense is defense. And we all know Samurai has great stamina, but after getting rocked three times in the first, that can drain you. No, just messes with your rhythm. Coming in hot with a game plan, and then three knockdowns later, Got to reassess. Nice. Big punch is being landed. Huge thuds. You can really feel the, the thuds when these guys are landing. Oh, nice right hand. Pseudo unaffected, seemingly. Huge nice. combinations. Answered back immediately. Looks like they're going to check the yep, cut. That's right. It's not a good sign when we're it five rounds look, in. It doesn't look that bad, though. Uh, nothing like the cut we saw in the last round, uh, fight with the uh, yeah. Hindu Espinosa and uh, La Máquina Gonzalez. I think... Uh, Shout out to Dr. Benjamin, part of the commission here in Tijuana, always in the best fights, always looking out for the fighters. Doctor says, you're good to go, boys. Doctor. We ain't stopping it on Oh, right into it. Alvarez comes right in, back Big into his orthodox hook. stance with that left hook. <laughs> 10 seconds, less than 10. Dr. Benjamin checking that cut. He's going to... Pay close attention between rounds. He's also a fighter, jiu-jitsu brown belt, I believe. Shout out to Benjamin. Always important to have a good, doc in there. good doctors that are also fighters that understand that you can't just stop a fight because of little blood. Manuel, who did you give that last round to? That was a tough one. I mean, uh, Zudo came back pretty strong in that round. It seemed like he charged up. Was landing some good shots there. Samurai landed great shots as well. That was a tough one to, to call there. That's a tough one. Um, I feel like the couple rounds before that, Samurai was getting his rhythm, and that one, Sumo came out strong. So hard, hard to say who you can really give that one to. Yeah, tough, tough Mexican fighters that refuse to back down. Ivan Zuro Alvarez representing Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, Mexico. Here we go, guys. We are halfway through this scheduled 10-round fight, going in to round six. Samurai Sosa knocked down three times in the first round, clawed his way back, but Zudo Alvarez, the man will not stop. He keeps throwing big shots from both stances. Both fighters fighting like this is the last round for the past five rounds. Samurai knows that he's way down on the cards after that first round. 
huge uppercut landed by Zurdo Alvarez. That lead hand of Zurdo from that orthodox position is giving Samurai tons of trouble tonight. I don't think he was expecting so many punches coming out of the lead hand tonight. No, not, not from that position either. That southpaw position, he was probably training southpaws the whole camp. And all of a sudden, Alvarez comes out in an orthodox position, lands heavy shots with that lead hand. That, that's, that dominant hand's in front landing big shots. Oh, big right hand from Alvarez, I mean from Samurai. The crowd's not tired. The crowd wants to see this go 10 rounds like this. Man, Alvarez, those uppercuts. I mean, that left hand has been so deadly Dynamite tonight. Dynamite tonight. Dynamite. Coming right throwing his own left hand uppercuts. Trying to give him a taste of his own medicine. I tell you what, I've been through Alvarez is one tough cookie. Still coming forward on, on Damian Sosa. Beautiful left hook landed by Alvarez. Somebody landed a good body punch. Oh gosh, that boy's got some power in those hands. You could just feel it, the vibration when they land. But look at Samurai come back with a 1-1-2. This is the stuff movies are made of, ladies and gentlemen. 10 seconds left. What a great combination coming out of Samurai. Samurai coming forward, trying to steal this round. Nice right hand from Samurai. The ref got a little bit of that one. <laughs> Good Lord, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching this and you're a fan of boxing, congratulations for getting one hell of a fight tonight. Definitely fight of the night. Let's check out this replay. Just huge punches are being landed. Man, both of these men, the heart they're displaying. I just, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm, Speechless to see what I'm seeing tonight. The heart. What a fight. What a card. But to finish it with a fight like this. No, and I, and I love the strategy of, of fighting orthodox and, and sort of taking advantage of, of having that secret weapon. I'm wondering to see if he's going to switch it up in the, the later rounds, but he's having so much success. We're getting into those later rounds as we go into round number seven here. It says eight on the on the uh, broadcast, but we are in round seven. Nice level changes from Surdo. Samurai coming out of that corner swinging. Samurai bouncing before the round starts. Round here, trying to reestablish rhythm, both of them trying to find that rhythm. But I have a feeling it's not going to be very long before the power starts flying again, Manuel. Yeah, I mean, look at Sudo. Every punch he throws is, he's trying to take him out with every shot. And Sosa's not letting up either, so. So interesting to see how Samurai in the first round fell three times. And now he's been, like his chin got reactivated. 
maybe it will, it, sometimes it wakes you up and it, it makes you numb to where you don't feel shots anymore. That's, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, there's some shots that'll hit you and it'll make you... Not feel I, anything I, for yeah, a while. I think until, maybe just the adrenaline hits you and then until, you don't feel nothing after that. Until the next day when that adrenaline's all worn off. Yeah, you're sore and everything hurts. Yeah, both of these guys are gonna feel this fight tomorrow. They're gonna feel this fight for a month after this. Oh, nice thudding right hand from Sosa. Sosa finding home for that jab, tripling it up. It's not a dry seat tonight. Blood, sweat, and tears are being splattered all around this auditorium today with this fight. Ooh, a hard right hand landed by Surdo. Does Surdo have Sosa's, another cut? Sosa's just putting everything he's got now into these punches. Ten seconds left. Seventh round. He's got Surdo in the corner. The crowd's imploring him to go, go. And we finish the seventh round with a samurai flurry. What a seventh round that was. Sosa started to reestablish that jab. Really started to take care of business. Flex of blood all over the table. <laughs> like I said, I've had to send Samurai several dry cleaning bills after I watch him fight. <laughs> As you see him start to establish the jab or land some big right hands in this seventh round. Seventh round going into round number eight. Three more potential rounds in this 10th round battle. Man, Alvarez looking tired. Samurai looking tired. What a display of endurance between these two. Fighters landing huge shots in the beginning of the round. See some blood dripping from the nose of Surdo. Big left hand from Sosa. Big thudding right hand to the back of the ear of Alvarez. Oh! And the crowd goes wild. Everybody on their feet. I don't know about that. That, la that right hand landed flush. But Alvarez did instantly point to the ground and say, come on, it's soaking wet. But that right hand landed big, whether it was a slip or not. Both of these fighters are dripping gallons of water. Sosa's legs still got a lot of spring. He's starting to use that footwork now. Samurai's activating. Oh, he's pouring it on right now. Sosa is feeling it. Sudo's backed up to the ropes. This is Samurai's opportunity. Landing huge punches. Huge shots. Oh, Sudo's punches are starting to look labored. They're starting to look tired. He's starting to just try to survive. The tape is coming off of Samurai's gloves. He's throwing so much. Samurai's looking for that home run ball. A minute left of this eighth round. Are we, are we behind or the board said round eight. I thought we were on eight. We'll have to figure out what round we're at in between. I 
thought we were in the eighth round. But the board saying nine, 40 seconds left. He's got him against the ropes. It's his opportunity with 27 seconds left on the clock. Ten seconds left. The tape almost completely off of Samurai's left glove and right glove. Both gloves. What a way to finish that that round for Sosa. The cards are wrong, guys. It looks like we do have two more rounds. We're going into, I believe, the ninth round right now. A little confusion on the broadcast. So I just want to make sure everybody knows we are going into the ninth round right now. And as we get some action of Samurai, that, that right hand that was designated a slip, that, I mean, that was a clean right hand. I don't like know about that. I mean, I see he did slip on the mat. You can tell his foot lets out, but... It was a great right hand from Sosa. So we got two more rounds left that of was this a, action. That was a really big round for Samurai. Huge for round Samurai. for Samurai. But I, I, I think he's starting to feel Alvarez slowly fade here. As we go into the ninth round now, we got uh, all the cards are right and all the screens are right here. Both of the screens were back and forth, but we got it. Two more rounds left. I don't want it to end. I didn't want it to be the 10th round yet. I'm happy that we're still two more rounds left for you, myself, Brandon, Kyle. Rafa Such an exciting fight from round one. No dull moments at all for this main event fight. I think Sosa's starting to feel the momentum shift, and he really wants to try to Put a highlight on this by, oh, oh he hurt oh, him with that yeah. one. He hurt him with that one. Got to be careful though, he's still, Alvarez still got power. But he definitely wobbled him with that one. Oh yeah, we saw those feet kind of almost give out, but then Surdo recovered. Let's see if Samurai takes advantage of having him in the corner. Surdo right. gets out of there quickly. He can't get sloppy though with that going for the kill. But yeah, Zudo's definitely starting to slow down here and feel the shots of Samurai. Samurai shots are slowly adding up. Barely halfway through this ninth round. Samurai trying to push off with that lead hand and throw that right hand off the break right there like that. Oh, there's another nice right hand. Beautifully landed on the jaw of Surdo, but Surdo keeps on Man, landing Surdo those jabs. One tough kid. He's out there just coming forward, taking shots. Relentless is Alvarez. Nice uppercut landing oh, by Samurai. Big left hook from Samurai. I feel like at any moment, one of these shots from Samurai could put Zudo down, and then Zudo comes back with a huge flurry. Oh, Samurai got him up on the ropes. Zudo turns him around. Now he's got Samurai on the ropes. Oh, big right hand from Samurai. Samurai gets himself off the ropes. That's a big right hand. Ten seconds left. Ten seconds left, ninth round. He's trying to finish strong. Put a stamp on this round. They what give a each way other to a look, finish like. it. Yeah, like 
We still got one, one more. more round, baby. <laughs> Tenth and final round to come. We're covered in blood here, ringside. You should see this. Crowd is raucous. Crowd can't believe what they're watching as you see Samurai in these replays land, digging hooks. Blood everywhere tonight. Here ringside, everybody's gonna take a little bit of a souvenir of this fight. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm glad I wore dark colors. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is round number 10, your final round. Damas y caballeros, este es el round numero 10. El último round. None of these fighters want to leave anything up to the judges. You want to make your destiny. You got to take it in this final round. Both guys came out with urgency. I'm just going to sit back and let this fan base here watching on Fight Hype. I'm going to just sit back and let you enjoy this 10th and final round. You don't need me to say anything. These boys are saying everything that needs to be said right inside that boxing ring. That cut looking nastier and nastier. <laughs> Two minutes left. Two minutes and a half. What, what, what a heart on, on Alvarez. Just as big as, as Samurai's heart. Two real warriors in there right now, trying to win it in this last round. I mean, they have not stopped the pace for a second. Non-stop. I mean, just digging so deep. 10 rounds of this, guys. 10 rounds. Samurai getting knocked down three times in the first. Coming back and fighting like this. This is, this is a Rocky movie you're watching in real life. These fighters are barely paying attention to the guard, just throwing haymakers and landing. We were talking about Rock'em Sock'em Robots a minute ago. These are the last seconds. How much will those three falls? Apart in the scoring. Oh my God, Rafa Manuel! Wow. Everybody is on their feet. Standing ovation for both of these Look fighters. Look at the referees. Look at the ref's shirt. Covered in blood. Look at our desk. Covered in blood. Blood and guts and sweat and tears that went into these fighters to make them the men they are today to be able to go do what they just did right now. Absolutely incredible. Huge round of applause, major respect for both of these fighters. And shout out to Toscano Boxing for making this fight happen. What great match make it tonight. Absolutely. Got one more bout as well. We got a swing belt. 
a little extra bonus bout between Edwin Humane and Yvonne Rosales, some young Mexican fighters that made weight. We're here to throw down if we had time, which we do after this fight, but I don't think there's much left in the crowd to be able to cheer after that one. Let's go find out who the winner is. Both of these fighters gave it their all tonight. Huge fight for Zurdo. Huge challenge for Samurai, the hometown favorite. The judges have already turned in the scorecards. Show of sportsmanship by both of these fighters and their corners. This crowd is ready to hear the official decision. Brought to you by Pablo, the voice, Pablo Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Después de 10 rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. No sin antes, un fuerte reconocimiento para el zurdo Álvarez y el Samurai Sosa por este gran combate desde Tijuana. El juez, Judge Alejandro Rochín, he scores it 95 to 92, 95 a 92. En judges, los jueces, Max Zúñiga la bandera y Carlos Flores had an agreement of scores 94 to 93. Estos dos últimos coinciden en números 94 a 93. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión unánime. Tierra Yaqui, Ciudad Obregón, Sonora. Y va Zurdo. Y también fuerte reconocimiento para su rival de Tijuana, Damián el Samurai Sosa. The crowd was not happy with that decision. Let's go to the post-fight interview to see what Zurdo, the winner, has to say about this war he just finished. Zudo, what a fight, man. You're Zudo the Southie, but you came out in the orthodox stance. And I think you caught him off guard here. Was that part of the game plan to surprise him with the switch stance in the beginning? Sí, gracias a Dios, hicimos una muy buena preparación para esta pelea. Y la verdad es que todo corazón a Toscano Boxing, la oportunidad que nos dio, he venido a enfrentar un campeón como es Damian Sosa y. First and foremost, I would like to thank uh, Toscano Boxing Promotions, and we we did a great fight, and I I really really grateful with with the promoter. You hurt him three times in the first round. Put him down. How close did you think you were to finishing him in the first round? No, la verdad que Damian Sosa es un peleador muy fuerte, es un peleador muy duro. Sabíamos que no iba a ser una pelea fácil, sabíamos que se iba a levantar como un guerrero que es un samurai. Y la verdad fue una muy buena pelea, le agradezco todo corazón a Damián Sosa por la oportunidad que me dio. Y muy buena pelea, cuando quiera hacemos una revancha. I would like to thank him for, for this opportunity, and I knew that he was going to uh, stand up once again. He's a warrior, like he's, uh, his nickname, Samurai. He's a samurai, he's a warrior, and I thank him. And whenever he wants, we, I can give you the rematch. I was going to ask if you want a rematch. Before I let you go, 
Congratulations, you showed the heart of a true warrior. Is there anyone you want to thank for being here today that brought you here to this stage? Agradezco mucho a mi hermano, mi hermano Gilberto Álvarez que vino a apoyarme. Voy con su novia que vinieron y le agradezco todo corazón a toda la gente de Tijuana que nos abrazó, que nos apoyó y que gracias a Dios aquí estamos y cuando quieran volvemos a venir. I wanted to thank my brother, Gilberto, he's here tonight, and also the, the fans here in Tijuana that supported me in this fight. Let's hear one more time for your winner, Ivan Suro We're here with Damien Samurai Salsa, one of Tijuana's great champions. Show the, the heart of a warrior. Did it surprise you the way he came out orthodox? It seemed like you got caught off guard by him coming out in an orthodox stance. Was it something you weren't ready for? Were you thinking you were going to fight Southpaw the whole time? Sí, pues, primero que nada, agradecido con toda la gente que vino a apoyarme. Sinceramente, sabía que era un peleador con experiencia, un peleador que se cambiaba de, de zurdo, de derecho. Realmente nunca había peleado con un boxeador con las dos guardias. Y bueno, realmente me entregué en cuerpo y alma en esta pelea. Yo creo que las caídas de, del principio fue lo que a lo mejor en las tarjetas hicieron esta puntuación. Estoy feliz con, con saber que toda la gente, con todo el apoyo de la gente, y pues también triste ¿no? por, por la derrota, pero, pero bueno, como siempre lo he hecho, soy un peleador que sale salir adelante y bueno, voy a seguir mi camino. ¿no? Y así, uh... I knew he was a top fighter. I knew he was going to switch stands from orthodox to softball, and he came out really strong. He's a really strong fighter. Uh, I know that the, the scorecards uh, were in my favor because of the knockdowns in the beginning of the fight, but I came out strong. I'm a, I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior, and you know, I'd like to thank all the people that came out to support. Yeah, you showed you were a warrior to come back after getting knocked out three times in the first round. After that, you didn't seem to get phased by any of his shots. Uh, were you hurt again at all in the fight uh, after the, that first round? Así es, incluso pues yo sentía como mis mis impactos lo lastimaban. En dos tres ocasiones pensé que iba a caer, pero pero bueno tuve el aguante para no para no hacerlo. Y bueno decidí seguir atacando, atacando hacia enfrente por las caídas. Pero bueno los jueces son los que toman la decisión. Soy un buen perdedor, fue la derrota y bueno. A seguir adelante, gracias a toda la gente que vino a apoyarme, a toda la gente que cree en mí. Esto no acaba, esto pues me sirve de motivación. Y bueno, espero volver a, a darles otra pelea muy buena, seguiré preparándome. Este, esto no pasa nada, no, simplemente es una derrota más. Es mi segunda derrota y bueno, yo creo que esto me va a hacer más fuerte. Y desde que agradezco a toda la gente que vino, es mucho el apoyo y, y bueno, esto me, me mantiene contento a pesar de la derrota. Despite of my loss, uh, people, all of the crowd, they motivate me. I knew that it was going to be tough for me. I came out strong. I had to uh, try to get the win, uh, despite of my the, being behind the scorecards. That's why I came out at him, trying to look for the fight, and that's what I did. And I'm sorry for this loss. It's my second loss in my career. But I'm going to come back stronger than. No shame in this loss. He mentioned. He'd be down to give you a rematch. Is that something you'd be interested? In? Run it back with him one more time. No, claro que sí. No, yo encantado de 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 hacer una revancha. Realmente, pues bueno, los jueces no tengo nada que decir. Por eso los jueces están aquí. Y bueno, simplemente gracias a toda la gente que vino a apoyarme. Realmente, fuck, neta que me gracias, perros. Volveré más fuertes de los puro. Gracias a la promotora Toscano, Lutis, Jorge, Israel. Mis entrenadores, a Joe, a Mesh, a, jo a Jorge, Freddy, Johnny Walker, a toda la familia Walker, neta les agradezco, me duele la derrota, pero, pero bueno, voy a volver más fuerte y, y adelante, arriba Toscano, arriba Tijuana. Gracias. This loss really hurt me, but you know, I'm really, really grateful with all with the promoters, with the people, with the crowd, and I'm not, I know I'm gonna come back, and I will be more than glad to have a rematch with them. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your champion, Tijuana, Damien Samurai Sosa! Y no se nos vayan a ir, damas y caballeros, tenemos un combate más, un combate más en camino. Un combate más.
You heard Pablo, we still have one more fight to go. Such an exciting night of fights. What a main event. I mean, I can't wait <laughs> to see a rematch of these two warriors get such back a, at such it. Such an emotional fight. I think a rematch is warranted as well because, I mean, if you think about it, uh, other than those three knockdowns from Alvarez in the first round, it was it was a very competitive back and forth yeah. fight. Yeah, there so, were some rounds that definitely were won by Samurai and definitely ones that were won by Surdo, but that first round. That first round, I mean, really, it's, it's I a mean, tough hole to dig yourself out of. That's like going down, you know, three touchdowns to a team in the first quarter. You know, now you got to fight back. And no, sometimes plus, it's just, if it was so neck and neck that that could have been the one that put it over the line. Honestly, it maybe, you know, you know, getting knocked down once, if it, if it, if it happens so early in the round. If maybe if you got knocked down in the first, that's one thing. At the end of the round, you get knocked down one time. That's only a you know ten eight. But yeah. to see those points get yeah, that's ticked a ten seven every time the thing gets ticked off, you know. Yeah, so. that's a ten seven round. And if all the other rounds were ten nine and very neck and neck, you can't really get out of that unless you win another round by a ten seven margin. As we go to our little bonus fight here for you guys, Humane Jr. taking on. If you, thought, if you thought it was over. You thought it was over. <laughs> we got two young, up-and-coming Tijuana fighters that want to prove uh, that they're the next big thing and a little bonus fight here. And after a fight like that, I guarantee you, these boys are coming out to bang. I don't think it goes the distance. I think both these guys are going to come out to put on a show here. I mean, after all that energy, I mean, even our cameraman is over here sitting down. He can barely stand. <laughs> Very emotional fight. But uh, we do have one more bonus fight, so stay tuned, guys, while they clean the blood off of, uh, off of the canvas here. Get ready for our next one. As Pablo, 20 years in the ring announcing game, going to call one more fight tonight to Scano Rising Stars. As we get the Tijuana Baja California, Jovan Rose. Go. You still hear that Tijuana crowd stand for their boy, Yoban Rosales. He's got one more fight. We're just commending, we're commending our referee's shoes because we're such big fans of his shoes. We both want a pair of these guys. I got my Adidas for $29. $30 Adidas! Oh my God. You got to tell me where we can get those shoes, ref. Okay, okay. Yeah, yep. Julio Arana Jr. got the best shoes in the game, in the referee game here. <laughs> I'm here with my buddy Max. We're going to fight that last night, buddy. Awesome. Awesome. I think it makes sense. Like I, we were talking earlier, I, I, you're going down, you get three knockdowns in the first. You'd have to win damn near pretty much the majority of the rounds. And I tell you what, Alvarez, he kept coming. I mean, the shots he was taking and coming back, I kept thinking he was going to slowly fade down, but he just he just kept coming back, right? I mean, it was very impressive for both guys, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Sosa, he was determined to come back and probably win the fight, but uh, I think the other guy at least won two more rounds in between. That made a difference. Sosa needed knockdowns of him of his own, I think, and that was the difference. He wasn't able to put uh, Ivan down, and that was what was going to be the difference. Yeah. Oh, he, that, he's got to he's got to he's got to judge this next <laughs> one. I wish he could sit in with us for a little We're bit about longer. To start We're a about full to start a full-on interview. We're about to steal you. Yeah. <laughs> Damas y caballeros, continuamos con nuestras acciones. Dos Cano Boxing Promotions en asociación con Chicken Ranch Casino. Watch Affinity. Micheladas El Cejas presentan ustedes este cotejo pactado a cuatro asaltos en la división de peso Super Welter. Four rounds of boxing in the Super Welter weight division. Interesting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the white trunks with him. He officially weighs in 155 pounds. He stands with a record of one victory and one KO, one defeat. 
Presentando la esquina azul, un pantaloncillo blanco con oro, con un peso de 155 libras, su récord. Una victoria, una derrota y esa victoria por la vía del cloroformo. Velázquez Gem, Tijuana, Baja California. Jovan Rosales. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears the brown trunks with black and gold trim. Officially weighs in. 159 pounds. Presentando a ustedes en la esquina roja, pantalón de color café con negro y oro, con un peso de 159 libras. He stands with a record of one victory, no defeats, and that victory coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un récord de una victoria, cero derrotas, y esa victoria por la vía del cloroformo de su natal. Santo Domingo, República Dominicana y ahora representando los colores de Team Zona Norte de Tijuana Edwin Humayne Junior right, With here. the final instructions con las indicaciones finales Julio Arana Junior Four rounds, cuatro asaltos a little super welterweight right, action. Pequeño elemento, por favor, dame limpia, dura, con mucho control, con mucha disciplina. Sí, mucho vocal, por favor. Tuyo, es suyo. Choque guantes, bailamos. Gracias. After a dinner like that we just had with Sosa and Alvarez, I mean, you just have to have dessert, right? You gotta 100%, have a little. I'm ready. You gotta have a little Sunday here. I'm ready for a little, a little ice cream. Little cherry on top. You top know what I'm off. saying? Let's go. Nice little Saturday here in TJ with an amazing card. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Rising Stars had another great card. Samurai Sosa and, and Ivan Alvarez, one of the best fights I've ever called ringside. It really was a Rocky movie. Yeah. It really was Rocky, man. Here we go. Let's see if these boys can, a little bit heavier weights here. These boys 154, 155 respectively. I know both of them want to finish here. After a card like this, man, and a crowd like this, a venue, and a promotion like this. Toscano from Boxing Promotions puts on a great show. High level boxers, great big show atmosphere here. Crowd is ruckus tonight. Big swings coming there from Rosales in the white. A little bit of an awkward style from Rosales. Edwin Hime Jr., a little bit more traditional. And we're throwing some little quick jabs here and there. A lot of respect coming out of Jovan Rosales, though. He made, coming from the Caribbean islands, a transplant now lives and trains in Tijuana, so claims this is his boxing hometown. I mean, if you're going to claim any hometown as a boxer, Tijuana is the, the place to do place it. a bad place to be to come and live and train. It's the uh, it's the Thailand of boxing for Muay Thai fighters. You know, they go over to Thailand. That's the motherland. Tijuana, you want work? You'll you want, get a fight. You want history? You can come out here and fight once a month if you want. Oh yeah, and if you start winning, you'll get one of these fights. Yep, real quick. Big swings, lunging swings coming from Rosales. <laughs> Well, uh, different kind of timing from Rosales. Man, he's really opened himself up. If uh, Humane can catch him leaning in with his hands down with a nice uppercut or a sh straight right hand, he might be able to hurt him. Oh, and not sure what he caught him with, but maybe body shot. But he looks wow. like he's hurt pretty bad. Super hurt. He's trying to stand up. Still got 45 seconds, but oh, he's still got that grunt. Yeah, he's still, still got that. Hurt. He's still cringing up. Oh, he's covering up that body. Oh, he's oh there's another down. one. Yeah, he shook his head to the corner a little bit. He's trying to compose himself. You see him taking those deep breaths. He stands up, but he's still got a good 26 seconds to try to survive. And you know, he made his corner saying, let me hit that upper, hit that straight with the upper lead uppercut. Catch him again to that body. He's covering that body real tight now. Oh, yeah, and Edwin knows it. He's only throwing body shots now. Ten seconds. Let's see if he can get out of the round. Rosales. Oh, there's another. Oh, he's covering that body good, though. I think he's going to make it, Rafa. Well, he made it. I mean, 
he made it. I wonder how <laughs> hurt he is. I know what that. I, I know, know what that tone means. I, I don't mean, know if he, he actually made he, it. You know, he made it. <laughs> I don't know if he wants to make it. I mean, he made it to the stool. He made it to the buzzer, but. Let's see if he's going to make it to that second round. He looks really hurt. Yeah, he looks like he's got a look in his eyes like, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I want to make it back to the locker room right now. No, and I mean, after the first round, knowing that he didn't really touch your opponent, I and mean, you're coming in with, with like, a couple of notches down of your stamina level of strength, you saw you didn't really connect. It's a bad place to be. This is the second knockdown, I think. I'm not sure what the first one was where he hurt him bad. It's got to be a body shot. I didn't get to see it, but when you go down like that and that writhing pain, it's usually a, a liver shot. And uh, you, we all know where, where Humane's going for him uh, in this second round here. Yeah. Play co close attention to those body shots. And, and it's tough to come back from those body shots. But you know the way... Rosales throws, he can catch. He may coming in a little too aggressively with a big one. Good jab from Rosales. But the more he opens up, the more he's open to be hit. We talked about getting out of those holes after getting knocked down twice in a round. Yeah, only four rounds, too, to, 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 to make it up. Like Sosa had ten rounds, or nine rounds after the first to try to make it up. Rosales has, you know, three more rounds to try to make up two points, you know. Ooh, Edwin again. Got body shot. Oh, he's smooth, man. He's oh, looking no, for he's that looking liver. For, oh, now the face opens up. Hits the right hand. Oh, another right hand. Beautiful technique from Edwin. Worked that body first round. Opening up that head for the second. Oh, see, oh, but there's there that big it is. shot that we were talking about. Rosales could land at any time. Doesn't seem to affect uh, Humane very much. But it might give him some energy, you know? No, I mean, might be, looks like he's got a little extra pep now. Feels like that maybe. motivation he needed. Nice jab, nice uppercut. Again, oh, the body shot. He wants shot. that body. He's but digging he's, into it very well. But you see that, that right elbow tight to the body of Rosales. Oh, another one. He's blocking those body shots, but he's leaving that head open. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. Humane come upstairs with that hook. Oh, nice three, two. One minute left, the second round of our bonus fight here. Oh, he wants Ooh, that. Edwin right is looking side. nasty. He's throwing them. Yeah, he's looking real technical here. I like it. Oh, nice. Uppercut to the three. Edwin just marching him down here. Rosales had his own body shot connect. 30 seconds left in this second round. Rosales' chin's tougher than that body right now because he's taking some big shots to the dome. And he's not really worried about him. Just doesn't have the speed uh, or the, the technical ability to keep up with Humane here. No, and, and Edwin is is connecting and then moving perfectly out of the way from those haymakers. Yeah, makers. yeah, I like how he can move back, avoid the attack, and come back and land his own shots afterwards. He's showing some good technical skill there. End of two, halfway through this one. I mean, you know, got to give it to Rosales. He was hurt really bad in that first round, and he was able to... Come back, mounted nice, nice comeback round. Didn't win the round, I don't think, but still was able to go ahead and get that going there. Ref asking Rosales, how's he doing? Giving him the thumbs up. A little warning to Edwin to make sure he keeps those Punches yeah, above those, the waist. Those body, you know, he's really trying to take those body shots, and when a guy's covering up, you're trying to sneak it underneath that elbow, but sometimes it can go a little low. Yeah. Hit under that <laughs> belt line. Now 
mouthpiece check from Arana Jr., referee there. Like he's going to some more power. But oh, gets, now he connected. He gets caught. Oh, nice right hand. And then Rosales comes right back, tries to make it, and then Edwin ties up. Edwin's real composed, man. Nice head movement there to slip obey the right hand. Ooh, Rosales throwing him the intimidation Ooh. face. Nice hook lands right on the chin. Oh, nice right hand there from Kumain. Trying to counter, but Edwin is just too fast. Yeah, he's kind of having his way with them, slipping them, ripping. Ripping and slipping. Oh, nice. Oh, got him with that one, though, did Rosales. Oh, that body's. Edwin attack. did not like that punch he received. Answers back with some nastiness. Yeah, he's coming with some ferocity. Flicks that jab out there, does gain. Rosales every now and then just winds one up and lands flush, though, with the one in Haymakers. But the body is reddening on both sides of Rosales. You wonder if one more good body shot might be able to finish the job here. Jermaine, I like he's not hunting the body too much. Oh, big shot's coming. Rosales is not covering his face at all now. I think he realized I'd rather get hit in the face than in the body right like, now. Like you said, his chin is, is answering for him. Yeah. Big deep breath for Rosales here. One minute left in this. Nice little left hook that landed. Oh, right oh, hand oh, 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 nice combo from Romain. Rosales has a pretty decent sized crowd sticking around to cheer him on, but he's getting tagged up right now with some big shots. Romain going, but getting squared up himself. A nice another body shot. Jermaine's really trying to put a cap on this one. Rosales not even covering up anymore. This could be dangerous. 30 seconds left. Wasn't sure it was going to go this long, but it got to give Rosales some credit. He's a tough son of a gun in there right now. He's, He's giving Edward a, a, ch a challenge here. And Edwin's breathing heavy now. Yeah, he's his punches are lumbered. They're a little labored. Ooh, stoppage. Oh, good call, ref. I think the ref realized. Yeah. It was one of those where it's not going to get any better. Yeah, he was, uh, and it'll probably tough. get worse before it, yeah. it gets better. So Too tough for his own good. Yeah, he was kind of just like a, he was just like a flag in the wind there, flailing around. And, uh, good call by the ref. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's protect these young fighters. Especially with a record of one and one, Jovan Rosales lives to fight another day. And Edwin Humane Jr. with a great ending to this night. Makes it 2-0 and with two TKOs, not bad. It's a good record to have here at Toscano Boxing. Well, it's been a pleasure, Rafa, every time I call. I love calling fights with you when they ask me. Who do you want? Who do you want in the booth with you? There you go. Ralph is always good, man. Likewise, Brandon. Plug, you're plug him in. The truest of the true pros. You're everywhere. Love watching you just flying all over the world, calling fights. Love, I, I love it. You think you can tell I love it. And, uh, you know, uh, Toscano's one of the best promotions I work for. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's one of the most professional. The production, big shout out to the production crew, man. The cameraman, the guys on the switchboards, Ladies Pablo. Ladies and gentlemen, the stoppage comes for the time. Two minutes, 58 seconds in the third round. Tenemos el tiempo oficial. Dos minutos, 58 segundos del tercer asalto. The current winner, by the way, of TKO victory. Su vencedor por la vía, el knockout técnico. Santo Domingo, República Dominicana y Team Zona Norte de Tijuana. Edwin Humayne. Like I was saying, great production crew, everybody in the broadcast booth, 
cameramen, audio guys, the director do a great job, man. Uh, makes our job a lot easier, keeping us in communications, you know, from top to bottom. Everyone on the team has done a great job. Y a nombre de Toscano Boxing Promotions, queremos agradecerles su apoyo y asistencia para este evento de esta noche. Muchísimas gracias a la Comisión de Box, todos los aficionados, toda la familia boxística de los Californias que se dio cita aquí en Tijuana. Mi nombre es Pablo Flores. Buen viaje, Dios los bendiga y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Let's get our clothes. What a great night of fights, Brandon. Absolutely. Off I, I, I couldn't be more proud of the promotion. Proud of the fighters here. It was uh, another great night as you see some of that action from the final fight, the little bonus fight we had there at the end. Where Edwin Humane is able to get that TKO finish. The ref had a seen enough. I mean, uh, Rosales, tough kid, but uh, just in the end, he didn't have enough to, to stick around there. But uh, like you said, lives to fight another day, and it's it's good for him, man. It's good I for mean, him. the the whole crowd here in Tijuana comes out because of fights like this, because of cards like this. When when you come out and you see one of these live shows, you feel the energy that that you live on one of these Toscano boxing. You want to come back. You want Toscano Boxing to put up another show. And every time it just gets bigger and better each time. Yeah, and we hope everyone um, on Fight Hype that enjoyed the show was able to, uh, to, to see some of the great, tremendous displays of heart, skill, determination from some of these warriors. Uh, as far as uh, fight of the night, I think that's an easy call there. Easy. That Damian Samurai Sosa fight. The main get, event, I mean. Gets knocked down three times in the first round, comes back. Battles back. What about performance of the night for you? Who do you think stood out the most? Performance of the night, uh, honestly, El Morro, just yeah. a technical boxer. Can't disagree. Looked really good. Those left hooks, just quickness. Uh, shout out to him and his crew. I, th I think he had the fight of the night, or, or at least the performance, performance of the night. Performance of the night, But solo, as well, yeah. our first female fight. That Prop, was props, also beautiful. Yeah, props to both Carla Valencia and... Uh, Katrina Sandoval, great fight. Uh, Sandoval able to take that unanimous decision. The return away Jones, we saw. Good job knocking off the, the rust and coming back in here tonight. Uh, unfortunate for, for Ricardo Espinosa, Miguel Gonzalez, that headbutt stopped yeah. early. Hopefully we that one could have been another that, great one. I think one. that one was great, destined for greatness. Uh, hopefully they can rematch as well as I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Damian and Alvarez doing oh, that or running that. We one have back to again. see one that one run back. That was great. Surdito Alvarez, congratulations, taking a huge win, making an upset for the crowd, but everybody was on their feet for the whole ten rounds. And really the speaking of the crowd, they were kind of the MVP of the night. Uh, the energy was electric in here. You could hear, especially when two Tijuana fighters, they would travel back and forth. You know, this roar, then that crowd roars for their guy. And, I mean, it was one of the best experiences I've had. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it uh, watching on Fightheim at home. And uh, hopefully you can make a Toscano Boxing Rising Stars event. We are, we'll be back in Stockton. We'll be back down here. And uh, if you see an event come up on the calendar, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to that YouTube channel and go ahead and save that event. And if you're in the area, Please come down and support because they are great live fights. On behalf of myself, Brandon Kyle, Toscano Boxing Promotions, and Rafa Alcaraz, thanks again for joining me in the booth. No, thank you. Always for, a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you to everybody at Toscano Boxing, and thank you to everybody watching tonight. It's been a huge honor for me to call these fights with you. Another successful night of fights here. Rising Scars, Topano, Toscano Boxing Promotions, and we'll see you guys next time.